Welcome one, welcome all to Wilson Field, home of the Chapman Panthers here in Orange, California. We got a tasty matchup for you guys tonight, folks. Chapman hosts the Wheaton Thunder in this matchup here on this beautiful Saturday night in Orange, California. Thank you so much for being with us here tonight, folks. Nico Schwegler, that's Lucas Patton on the end, joined by our very own sideline reporter, Ainsley Savant in the booth here tonight. How are you guys feeling about tonight's matchup? Super excited for the matchup today, Nico. Very physical team against a very quick, younger team, so it could go any way tonight. What do you think, Ainsley? I am so excited. I definitely feel like there is a lot of energy on both sides, so I am super hyped to see how that's all gonna play out on the field tonight. No doubt about that. Both of these teams coming up losses tough ones at that as for the Chapman Panthers they're coming off two losses in New Jersey where they didn't have much luck six to three win in their opener contributing to six of their seven goals eight goals allowed as for Wheaton on the other side it's been a rough season opener five goals five goals allowed but Lucas that shot and goal percentage just has not been in their favor all year long of course and having consistency in front of the goal is almost the most important thing in soccer you can't win without scoring goals Chapman have been pretty consistent about it 50 percent but Wheaton has had some difficulty when it comes to being able to be consistent in front of goal, and I'm sure tonight they'll be hungry to score some more. Well, it'll be on full display tonight. They have some great, great attackers for them in the front line. But Ainsley, you spoke earlier with some of these Chapman players. How are they feeling about tonight's matchup, especially coming af after that two-game lo losing streak in New Jersey? That's right, Nico. The theme for tonight is definitely redemption. I had the opportunity to speak with Alex Glynn and Leo Wells, and they both had a shared consensus that they both are ready to take this opportunity to come back even stronger after those losses. They are using it as a motivation to do even better for tonight. Well, Chapman, they're coming off a disappointing season last year where they really had to draw it out with a lot of teams and especially disappointing after that 2022 championship campaign where they won the entire thing in the Sky Act. But Lucas, it's been a tough year already for them going through. Of course, they had a great start with that 6-3 win in the first game, but in New Jersey, they had two tough losses. So I'm sure they're very hungry to get back at it. Korea's done a great job at recruiting, so it's gonna be an exciting game for today, Nico. No doubt about that. Ainsley, we're excited to see you down on the sidelines. Hopefully you can pick up some nice tidbits for us and we'll see you down there. Thank you, Nico and Lucas. I have loved being up here, but I will be back down on the sidelines having all the updates for you, so I will see you there. That's what we love to hear. And as we now take a look at what happened in New Jersey, Stevens, they lost two to one on that Friday, heading into that Sunday matchup with number 12 Montclair State, ranked number 12 in the nation, that is. Three nil scoreline, two saves for the Red Hawks. Really 10 fouls to three in favor of Chapman. That was the really only bright spot for Chapman throughout that weekend, Lucas. Of course, and facing a team like Montclair is always going to be difficult, especially because they're one of the top ranked NCAA Division III teams in the United States. Chapman with the three fouls to 10 fouls against Montclair, maybe just got a little bit scrappy because of the physicality, frustrations could come in, but I'm sure tonight they'll be very excited to get back at it. Well, they definitely got down early. They were down 2 nothing in that first half, had to scrap their way back. A lot of their shots, a lot of their corner kick opportunities coming in that second half. We'll see if that flips the script here tonight, where in that first game against Stan, they were on fire. Five guys getting on the score sheet. You want to see more of that from Eddie Carrillo's side here tonight. Of course, and you were talking about corners earlier. That is one thing that Chapman is going to need to look out for, simply because Wheaton's physical team is so much better, and it's all because of this man right here, Steve McGrath. He's been such, he's done such a good job at recruiting big, strong, physical players, and I'm sure he'll try to take advantage of that attribute today. McGrath now in his third season. He puts out this excellent starting 11 for this one in three Wheaton side. Unfamiliar ter territory, Jack Crayhill gets the start in goal. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Mason Scalante suffering an injury on Thursday versus CMS, a big time storyline heading into this one. Mason Louth, another one of their key playmakers, Price Anderson, we'll talk a lot about him later but he's one of their star attackmen, and we have to know about how they're going to go forward, especially when they've hit a little bit of a wall when it comes to scoring goals these past few, past few games. Of course, and having a player just like Price Anderson right here, it's almost like a God-given gift. Every coach loves a tall player like this. He's physical, he's Holland-esque, some would say, and he's, in my books, an ideal striker. He's prolific, 
He wants the ball, but he's also eager and excited to give the ball to his teammates and work around with all of them. We talked about the shot and goal percentage. He's completely different from the rest of his team. Doesn't take many shots, but when he does, he hits the target. Two goals as a result, but he does only play just over 50 minutes a game. Definitely something to keep an eye out for, as we'll see how much impact he's able to make on these defenders and this experienced Chapman back line. And speaking of Chapman, we got to move forward to how Eddie Carrillo is going to be approaching this game. Now in his 28th season, He's the winningest coach in Chapman soccer history, and he's someone who has all the answers, at least we hope, in terms of getting them back to the mountaintop and competing with Occidental and the rest of the top teams in the Skyac. Of course, and having a coach as good as Coach Eddie Carrillo, as a former player, you love to just get behind your coach and work for him and die for him almost. So I'm sure the players today will be very excited to work with him. An experienced starting 11 for their Garrett Linfelt had a season-ending injury last year where he wasn't able to contribute, already gone the score sheet in that first game. Jonah Freeing trying to find that consistency alongside Leo Wells in that front line. Those three, when they're clicking, they're on fire. When they're not, it could spell trouble for Chapman as an offensive unit. Wesley Jackson making his first start of the year, big time addition alongside Dylan Chung, who scored a fire goal in that first game. But we also have to just talk about the main man himself, Leo Wells. We mentioned him earlier, made the switch from number eight to number 11, and he's playing like it. That man has been on fire this season now in his sophomore year. Two goals against Stanton, one assist in that game, and he's just been the man to watch for the Panthers all year long. Of course, and Leo is one of those players that if you do not have your defense lock them down quickly, they're gonna have a problems all night, Nico. He's quick, he's short, he's a prolific goal scorer, and it's almost a natural instinct for him to get in front of that goal and execute to, per to perfection. Absolutely. When we talk about a guy like Leo Wells, he's the type of guy that you need to keep an eye out for. His first step is unreal. His touch, his technique, definitely something that we need to keep an eye out for throughout this game. And fortunately for us, our very own Ainsley Savant got a chance to talk with him before the game as well. All right, I'm here with Leo Wells. He is a sophomore on the Chapman soccer team. Um, Leo, how are we feeling going into this game today? What is your confidence levels? How is the team feeling? Please tell us everything. Yeah, we're feeling great. Uh, we just went to New Jersey last weekend, um, and those results didn't go as we wanted. But we know we have a really strong team. We have a lot of new guys. Um, and so we're feeling really confident this year. And so our energy is great. And yeah, ready for a good game today. That's very good to hear. Hopefully it's reflected out on the field. But I also understand that a former teammate is on the opposing team today. Kaden Yamada was apparently on your team while you were in high school. How is that rivalry, rivalry going to play out today? Yeah, so Kaden and I went to high school together. And so our senior year, we played the high school soccer season together. Um, it was super cool that we were able to play that season together. Now we're both playing here in college. Um, and it just worked out that he's here playing us. And so I actually talked to him a little bit before the game, caught up with him because I haven't talked to him in a little bit. Um, but no, we're both feeling really good. It's going to be exciting to play against him instead of being on his team. So we'll see how that goes today. Well, thank you so much, Leo. Good luck out there, thank and you. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, thank you, guys. Sounds good. Yeah, good to see you. So yeah. Let's go. Thank go Panthers. Yeah. <laughs> Always great to hear from Leo Wells and especially Ainsley Savant. But now we also have to talk about the main thing we were talking about earlier. Jack Crayhill makes the start in goal after Mason Escalante, the conference goalkeeper of the year for Wheaton, out with an injury. We'll see how that affects their game. But Crayhill, 6'5 in his own right, definitely an imposing person in between the pipes. Yeah. And my, I believe that Chapman's going to have a little bit of difficulty getting by him. He's a very big stature. He's, when it, his freshman year, he had lots of reps, so he's not unfamiliar with the field, and I'm sure he's going to have a great night tonight. Well, he did only make two appearances last year. Played 88 minutes in the game against CMS where they lost 2 to nothing. conceded both of those goals. We'll see how that plays out for the rest of them going forward. But taking a look at also what Chapman has going for them. We mentioned a lot with that freshman unit. They were very, very spectacular in that first game. Maybe had a little bit of a drop off afterwards, but still some very promising talent with that recruiting class from Carrillo and the rest of his staff. Of course, and I'm sure Carrillo is very excited to be able to display his new recruits in front of everyone, in front of the crowd and on, and on the field as well. We'll get to see three of those guys in the starting 11. Dylan Chung, who scored in his first debut. So did Evan Crownfield making a midfield appearance and Cooper Haley. Those three have had some very good success within that midfield. The midfield, definitely something that we're gonna try and highlight here tonight with Connor Kildy, one of the sophomores, making an appearance there. That three in the middle, not very experienced. They have a lot of energy and a lot of youth, and they're gonna try and use that to their advantage. Yeah, and having an experienced midfield is almost the most important thing in soccer. They control the game, they control where the ball goes, how it gets there, and when it gets there. 
Coach Creel putting all this trust into the freshman team. It could be risky for some teams, but I'm sure that he's going to be able to execute it with perfection on a beautiful night like tonight. Well, he had questions that needed to be answered, and so far, some of these freshmen have answered the call. But as we take also a look at what has happened with the Panthers, Riley Thomas, their number 10, their big creative playmaker, usually in that midfield, he's been injured these first few games. We've heard that the week, he'll be back in a few weeks from Coach Carrillo, but how do you think that plays out? for the Chapman Panthers coming in and how these freshmen have to step up in place of one of their top seniors. Having a top influencer on the team like that go out injured is always unfortunate, but I'm sure with all the new freshmen that Coach Creo's brought in, they'll be able to fill that gap with no trouble at all. Now, we talked about Crayhill being 6'5", but we also have to talk about for Wheaton, their size. We talked about it before the game when we were going through our notes. This team is tall, 6'1", 6'2", 6'2", and above. Some of these guys, Price Anderson, 6'4", at the top of that formation, definitely something that needs to be kept an eye out for as this game goes on, especially with this smaller, less physical Chapman side, although they like to get chippy. Yes, they do, Nico. Having that physicality difference could pose lots of problems for Chapman tonight. With set pieces and corners being a major part of soccer, especially in Division Three, it could really affect Chapman in a negative way if they're not careful. Well. We'll see what Wheaton has in store here, trying to break up their two-game losing streak against the Panthers. Chapman trying to do the same thing at home, keep that home win streak alive. We'll have all the action here, right on CSPN with Flow Sports, right after this break. Welcome back to the CSBN broadcast booth. Great to have you with us. Nico Schweigler, that's Lucas Patton. Lucas, we got a great one in store. Wheaton and Chapman trying to break up some losing streaks here tonight at Wilson. Going to be an interesting one for sure. That sure is, Nico. Both teams are going to be very hungry to get at them and get at each other because they're both coming off of two losses. Very toughly contested losses, but still losses. And especially because they both had such good starts to the year, I'm sure they're going to get a bit chippy tonight and hopefully they'll keep it a little bit clean. Well, no doubt about that. Chapman has not played since last Sunday where they wrapped up their road trip to New Jersey. As for the Wheaton Thunder, they have been coming off a loss to CMS. They lost their starting goalkeeper in the process. And now they have a new task at hand with the former Skyac champions from two seasons ago. Lucas, definitely a tough battle for both of these teams who've never met before. Of course, and because there's a few legacy players in that team, like Busby, like a few of the guys who understand what it takes to win a championship, I'm sure that Wheaton's going to have a bit of difficulty getting past those vet veteran players who understand how the game works. But on the same time, Chapman's going to need to watch out for the physicality of Wheaton. Most of the guys are above six feet tall. Some of the center backs six foot five. So they're going to it's going to be a very tightly contested match tonight, Nico. No doubt about that. As we take a look at what both of these teams have in store formation wise, it looks like Wheaton will come out in a 4-3-3. Price Anderson at the top of that all mixed in with Kyle Johnson as well as number 11, Mason Louth out of Lakewood, Colorado. Definitely a very domestically diverse squad in Wheaton, nationally known around the entire nation, just outside of Chicago. 
As for Chapman, a lot of players from California, some from Washington, and a few others around the country, but definitely two teams that have been able to gel quickly despite their potential cultural differences. Of course, and regarding Chapman's team, having players that are from such close-knit areas, lots of players from California, lots of players from the West Coast, I feel like that really helps with a team when it comes to bonding, when it comes to you know, understanding each other, having brothers and dogs on that team to work with. So it's going to be a very good game tonight, Nico. Well, as we take a look at what Chapman has in store on the formation-wise, Jackson Busby, usually listed as a center back, he's usually the rock, the anchor of the defense. He's going to start in what looks like a midfield position. We'll see what the captain has in store. He got played as a forward last year, Lucas, at times last season. We'll see what he has to go with in the midfield alongside Cooper Haley. So we are off with Price Anderson as Caden Yamada gets us kicked off into the Chapman zone. Kyle Johnson already making an attacking play. Flames for handball. And that's dangerous from Wien to start off with. We'll probably see that a lot during this game, Nico. Lots of long balls letting players like Anderson couple and fight with the defense that Chapman has provided. So maybe that'll be a little taste for how the game's going to go. Absolutely. So a big game for Chapman goalkeeper Alex Glynn. Yet to record a clean sheet on the season. He was very impressed with how he and his defensive unit played last season. Now has a chance to go against one of the top teams in the entire nation for D3. Whipped into the box with Payson. First action for Jack Crayhill. We'll be mentioning him quite a bit throughout this season. Previously played in the German fifth division. Now as a junior, you mentioned he played 14 appearances in his freshman season. Just two last year behind Scalante. And having a player like that in goal, someone who's big, six or five, is always reassuring for defenders, knowing that he's good with footwork. A little bit chippy down on the field. So Natty Hamilton, he goes down hard. We mentioned the size for Wheaton. He definitely doesn't have that necessarily in stature. Five foot four, but his technical ability, that's what's earned him his spot in this starting lineup now as a senior. And Wheaton already applying some early pressure. Galvin away with it, but Anderson's still there. And a bit of contact in the box. No foul, says the referee, as Bren Ben Frazier with a nice shield on the six foot four Anderson. Anderson showing some difficulty right now, kind of getting his flow in the game, but he's for sure going to be attacking that back line, and especially that left side, allowing him to cut in and shoot with the right foot. So now Busby, first time on the ball in the midfield. One, two with Jackson. And that will go off the captain for a Wheaton throw. So Wesley Jackson makes his first start at left back. We saw him a lot at left center back. That role being vacated right now. Excuse me, being in place right now with the freshman Dylan Chung, who's really come on strong in his first few games as a college freshman. Yes, yes, Nico. And having a fast start to your freshman year is always pivotal, especially when it comes to collegiate athletes. And I'm sure he'll be proud of how he's been playing recently. So Brock Seneff looking for an early throw in deep into the box. Towards Anderson's way, cleared away by Chung. And those long throws, we're gonna see a lot of those tonight, Nico, simply because Wheaton has the physicality aspect on Chapman. They have lots of very tall, very strong players who can hold up the ball and wait for their teammates to come and help them out. So, so far, both of these teams trying to just settle into the match. Crowd starting to file in here at Wilson Field. Thank you so much for joining us here on Flow FC with CSBN. Dangerous ball through the back. And Linfield with some room to run. Gets tripped up. And no call there on the sideline. It will go out for Crayhill's first goal kick of the game. Already some early action for John Hearn in defense. And Wien's going to need to watch out for that as well because although Chapman may have not the physical aspect, they're a lot quicker than some of the bigger Wien defenders. So they could be played behind the, behind the defenders or above the defenders, and they might have some problems with that, Nico. Hearn making his fourth start of the season, the six foot four defenseman. Another one of those imposing players on the back line alongside Leo Wells' former teammate, Caden Yamada. Frazier lofts it up in the air, and Kildee brings it down. So some frantic football so far from both of these teams, Lucas. What do you expect to see as both of these teams try to settle in and get a little bit of movement in the midfield? From Chapman's perspective, I expect to see them 
pl play lots of simple passes, maybe tiki taka as soccer, you know, lots of small passes, keeping possession and stuff like that. First corner for Chapman. We'll see how the Wheaton defenders deal with this. Although they have the physical aspect, Chapman does have a lot more quickness to them. So, so Linfelt the one to stand over this one. We'll go for an outswinger. Garrett Linfelt has one goal already on the season after four goals, six, a, six assists two seasons ago in the championship winning year as a sophomore. Coming out of not too far away, Redlands, California, trying to make an impact as a senior in this starting 11. We'll see the cross into the box there. Not playing it short, which is a bit confusing from Chapman because they don't have the height, but we'll see. Flicked out to Kildy, back in. And no harm for Crayhill. I feel like we'll see a lot of Crayhill coming off his line today. He has that physical prowess with him. He has the height. So maybe he'll play more of a sweeper tonight. Potentially, we'll see what Steve McGrath has in order for his number two. Seneff now played forward for Anderson. Offside flag did not go up. Freeing. Steps away from one to Busby. A turned over by the freshman Haley. Now Chapman trying to settle into this midfield. Perhaps why Busby's playing so far up compared to where he usually is. Now Johnson scored 10 goals just last season. Already has one goal, one assist so far this year. It's a nice through ball to him. And he well taken out by Craig Hill right there. As we discussed earlier, Nico, we're going to be seeing him a lot come off his line and impose on the strikers that are trying to get past him that, hey, He's not here to play around. Well, Crayhill, the business econ major, one of the many on this Wheaton side. Makes his first start of the year after coming in for 88 minutes after Mason Scalante took a boot to, I couldn't really tell if it was the head, the shoulder, or the chest against CMS on Thursday. But a quick turnaround, potentially fatigue, could be something that's in the cards for Wheaton here tonight. Chapman playing the high pressure. A nice slide tackle to get possession in, their own, in the other team's half. Linfelt away from one. Now with Wells. Wells trying to use that first step, and Wells goes down hard. We'll be seeing a lot of that tonight, Nico. Because Wells has the speed, and he also has the eagerness to get physical with the players, we're going to see him taking 1v1s a lot tonight. He can be very choppy, but also he has the ability to have that finesse and glide past defenders so effortlessly. And with that speed, with that pace, you just can't give him any ounce of room. If you saw our last home game against Stanton, six to three the score in favor of the Panthers. Wells scoring his second goal off a beautiful curler where he just had all the time and space in the world now lofted over as Anderson won't be able to challenge Glenn on that one. And it seems to be that Wheaton is playing him in almost as the number nine, letting him get, letting him have the freedom to move where he wants to, but also keeping him pretty central. He's going to be a pivotal player to tonight's game. Fantastically won back by Timmy Jones out of Spokane Valley, Washington. A little bit of trickery there from Glenn. So you have to like the way that both of these teams are playing so far, simply just shedding off some of the rust probably for Chapman. As for Wheaton, still maybe a little bit rusty off of that loss against CMS. But as for a guy like Alex Glenn in goal, you have to wonder, what's his mindset, especially after considering that he's conceded two-plus goals in every single one of his matches so far this year? I mean, for Alex Glenn, I'm sure he's biting at the bit to be able to get his first clean sheet of the year. Clean sheets are almost the... Uh, cake of the goalie position. You know, strikers score goals and goalies get clean sheets. So I'm sure he'll be very excited to be able to try to get that tonight. Lofted up for Busby, battling with Hamilton in the midfield. Jackson thought about playing that one through to Wells. Now with Haley. Chung. Through to Wells. Wells with some green room in front of him. And now Chapman switches the play, has some room on the other side. Frazier takes a trickle. Good defending from Wheaton there to just put his body in front of the ball before he gets the shot off. Dangerous play from Chapman, though, in the first five few minutes of the game. You have to like the attacking progress for the Panthers. 
That was a nicely built up move. I'm sure we'll be seeing lots of those little on the ground plays, not too much in the air, switching the field, just because they don't have the physicality behind them, but they for sure have the skill, Nico. That one just trickled off the arm of Crayhill. Wells came in at the last moment. Linfelt with the lefty. Almost found its way through to Busby at the back post. We didn't do just enough. A curious pick from Coach Carrillo to play Busby so high up the field, especially because of his captaincy position. I would have assumed they played him in the back so we could control the younger defensive line, but I'm sure that he'll do very well tonight regardless. Well, all of these fantastic defenders as Chung loses it to Hamilton. Now Senef trying to play in his striker. And Chapman, you can tell that they, they were watching the scouting report. They knew that Anderson likes to get out in front and find that through ball through. Yes, they did. And Glenn, I'm sure, did his homework as well, playing very high off the line, making sure to sweep up any passes or any long balls. No doubt about that. Going back to your Busby point, obviously, you want to see him potentially at the back being able to orchestrate the orchestra. But with the guys like Wesley Jackson, Cormac Galvin, two players who were fantastic in the back line for the Panthers last season. You have to say you're trying to find a way to put all of them through, and with an inexperienced midfield, that's exactly what Coach Creel elected to do. Of course, a smart play there, but just gets it to a little bit short. There's Garrett Belcher who took the throw. Chatham. Belcher, the only freshman in the squad for Wheaton. Lots of pressure in the first early few minutes when it comes to Wheaton playing the ball back. We'd love to see that. Busby. Now Wells all the way inside. Tried looking for Freeang. That's a difficult ball for him to play, and he almost got through it. Still applying the pressure. We saw a lot of that against Stanton here on this field about two weeks ago. And Crayhill's doing very well to work under that pressure of having strikers come at you. As a former goalie I've played my whole life, I understand that having someone run at you full speed is sometimes intimidating, so he's doing very well to hold up with that pressure from the Chapman offense. Linfeld shielding off the freshman. Garrett Linfeld around one. And a nice progressive move there from the senior Linfeld out of Redlands. Earns another early corner for the Panthers. So three corner kicks early in this game, all from the near side. You have to wonder, when will Chapman finally capitalize, especially against this imposing Wheaton defense? Well, we've seen Chapman for sure attack Wheaton without holding back or without having any doubt. But I'm sure it'll be a matter, just a matter of time until we see them put the ball in the back of the net. No substitutions yet through 12 minutes in this match. Short chip from Linfeld. Brought down by Haley. And an easy day's work for Crayhill. Now Wheaton trying to get out on the counterattack, dealt with well by Frazier. That is an important slide tackle to make right there because if not, Price was by himself for the D-line. Now Anderson tried getting there, and it's a clever little clearance there from one Alex Glenn. Chapman is going to need to work up on making sure that Price Anderson doesn't play with that back line and doesn't get in behind, because if he does, I'm sure Chapman's in for a world of, of hurt. So right now, Wheaton, first few chances to really get into the Chapman zone. We've seen a lot of them as a counter-attacking team. Quite surprising to see, especially with a team of their quality. They won 11 games last year, Lucas. Went 6-1-1 one one in the conference. Obviously in a difficult conference with Illinois Wesleyan, you have North Central, one of the premier, not only soccer teams, but very, very good football program. Always nationally ranked in that one. And so to be able to compete with some of the best, Wien has to be up there. So far this season, they just have not found it sitting at the bottom of the CCIW at one and three. Of course, and because of them sitting at the bottom, I'm sure that especially tonight, they're away from home. They have time to maybe clear their mind from being at their own stadium. I'm sure they'll be buzzing to be able to get another win. Haley skies that one towards Linfeld at the back post. And Linfeld able to win the header over Belcher. 
a curious choice by the Chapman offense to be able to swing balls in the air like that against a defense that's so big. But they have been on the attacking prowess in the last few minutes. They've had three corners, lots of shots, lots of pressure from the offense. So pretty tight game so far. Well, that's a matchup to keep an eye out for the senior versus the freshman. As we mentioned, Belcher, the only freshman in this starting 11 for Wheaton. Going against a guy like Garrett Linfelt, who has all the tools in his arsenal. Speaking of the man, as it's cleared away by Senef. Now with Anderson. Two goals to his name. Looks for it back from Hamilton. And aggressive goalkeeping from Glenn. So far, he's played a fantastic game, especially recognizing those through balls and coming off his line. His awareness this game has been absolutely subpar. He's been able to recognize when the runs have been going in, and he's been able to orchestrate and tell his defense, hey, if you're going to let him run in, at least hold him offside. And some great bit of defense there. Ben Frazier put in, in the work against Kyle Johnson. Johnson, who comes out of Champaign, Illinois, not too far away from Wheaton, had 10 goals last year, fourth in the conference. Just behind two other guys, including, as well as his first place teammate, who was none other than Price Anderson with 16. Those two link up very, very well. And when we asked Steve McCrath about what happens with them, he talked a lot about their positioning and their ability to read those through balls and be able to put themselves in the right places to strike him off. But with having an offense that loaded and that good in front of goal, it's for every single team in the third division, it's always going to be difficult to be able to stop them or at least keep them under control. So you're probably not going to be able to see much of it from our angles as that one goes all the way out wide to Jackson. Now Busby charges forward. Big strike there from Freeing. Crayhill flying across the goal just like a Panther right there to make that save. That is a dangerous shot from Chapman, though. And now more danger as Freeing miss hits it on the feed from Garrett Linfelt. Some promising attacking play now. Just about 16 minutes gone in this matchup. Still nil-nil on the scoreboard, though, Lucas. Of course, but Chapman's really putting on that pressure now. First shot on target for them of the game, and if they continue like this, I'm sure it's just a matter of time before they score their first. So two different styles of coaching that we're seeing right here, as that one's went one back by Kildy. Freeing wanted it. Kildy gets taken down by Hearn. And that is stellar defending from Wheaton right there. That slide tackle was almost necessary to prevent that goal. Threw over the top, right to Senef. And Senef goes down hard. Haley, the culprit. But speaking of previously, all those Chapman players still down there on that bench, no subs looking. As Anderson over the top has a potential one-on-one -on -one with Glynn. We and are in. And Glynn with some superb goalkeeping. But Glynn goes down. And he might be a little bit shaken up after that shot. That is a beautiful slave from Alex Glynn. To be able to come out and stretch your body like that is almost superhuman. Fantastic save. He's still grimacing a little bit in pain. Going to get our first stoppage of the game, but perhaps we might be seeing Patrick Bulabenci a bit earlier than we expected. As the San Diego native Alex Glynn still dealing with the damage of that last shot. Quick counterattack from Wien, and you almost saw the defense non-present when he played that through ball over, so I'm sure Glenn's going to have a few stern words with his back line for that one. Now Brock Seneth to take this corner. Wesley Seneth, his brother, had been a starter in all of their games so far this season. Does not make it into the 11 here tonight. That's good defending from Chapman. That's, I believe, one of the most dangerous plays that we has at his disposal today, simply because of the height of almost every single one of their players. Chapman's really going to need to watch out. And Glenn able to come away with that one. The Wheaton bench thought they might have a little bit of glimmer of hope. Linfelt trying to spur on the Chapman counterattack. Anderson. And it's been all Brock Seneff really at the heart of it all. He does not wear the number 10, he wears the number six but right now. Playing like a true creator in that midfield role, there's a reason why Steve McCrath has awarded him as that captain. Of course, and having someone like him in your midfield is always just super helpful. Communicating to the forwards, but also helping out the defenders whenever there's pressure. So he's just a 
being a great player out there. So as we take a look at what's happening on these benches, finally have a brief moment. All the players for Wheaton still up there, warming up, getting loose. Chapman, on the other hand, no substitution. Seem like it's imminent right now from Coach Eddie Carrillo as all those players still waiting on that bench. Definitely an interesting tactic. Wheaton always trying to keep their players loose and warm. We'll see if that plays their benefit, especially coming off a day around turnaround from Thursday's game. And that doesn't surprise me, Nico. With the style of play that they've been playing so far, fast pace, counterattack, I'm sure they'll be switching people in and out all night to have energy all 90 minutes. As Chung goes down, Anderson wanted to play the throw in quickly. But it looks like we'll get another patented Brock Seneff long throw into the box. And these long throws, Chapman are going to need to be very wary of because this strategy has developed in the last what, five years. And it is very effective, especially when you have a team of tall guys like Wheaton does. Towering laser from Seneff and Johnson through the uprights. That would be three points on any given Saturday, but not tonight. And that is dangerous play from Wheaton right there. To be able to have the time and space to be able to connect with your foot to the ball is something that Chapman needs to eliminate and quick. So we're 20 minutes gone, Lucas. Not much really happening in terms of shots in front of goal for either of these sides. What needs to happen for them to be able to challenge these goalkeepers a bit more outside of them having to come out of their net every once in a while? Well, it's been very contested on both sides. Chapman's had lots of opportunities to get in front of goal. And like that shot that we just had, unfortunately having Cray Hill save it, but it's been very back and forth. Very two different styles of play. Chapman more playing possession, while Wheaton is more gun and run, balls over the top, through balls. So. It's very tightly contested so far, Nico. Coach Carrillo taking notes, trying to make the adjustments as necessary. No adjustments needed from Alex Glenn so far in this match. He has been fantastic. And that is a great catch to be able to catch under pressure with all the players around him like that. He's just been amazing in this first half, Nico. So no subs from either team. Both coaches allowing this one to play out. Who makes the first move? And Anderson does well to win it away. Johnson. A few uncharacteristic mistakes early from Cooper Haley. Fortunately for Chapman, it hasn't punished them just yet. Now with Belcher. Cuts it inside, coming back all the way into defense, as well as the attackman. Freeing on the pursuit of Jones. And here comes the pressure that we've seen all night from Chapman all over again. And the pressure placed to their advantage. Now Linfelt, numbers going forward. Linfelt goes down hard, grabbing his ankle. You've seen lots of collisions this game so far, so pretty chippy game so far, would you say? Definitely has been back and forth. This referee crew allowing things to play on very often. Now with Wells near the baseline, Belcher away. And dealt with well by Kyle Johnson all the way up into the stands. Wells has been a little bit quiet tonight, would you say, Nico? He hasn't had so much of involvement that you'd expect him to have, but I'm sure throughout the night we'll see him be involved and probably, hopefully, get his name on the score short. Well, a lot of things running down this near side on this flank as that one ricochets off Wells for a Wheaton goal kick. We saw a lot of Garrett Linfield getting some individual runs to begin the game. Now Coach Carrillo trying to switch things up, put Freeing on the left, Linfield in the middle and moving Wells left to right, hopefully trying to get him a few more touches where Chapman seems to be playing the ball. I'm sure, and soccer, Nico, is just like a game of chess. You move your pieces around, see what works, see what doesn't, and hopefully towards the end, you come out on top. So now with Galvin, the Chapman sophomore men's player of the year, voted among his peers here at Chapman, the rest of the, uh, of the athletics department. Had a fantastic year last year as a sophomore. And now back again in the 11 as a junior. And Galvin's had a huge influence on this first half, I think, being able to control his area, talk to his teammates. So far, he's been very good. Belcher tried to play the one-two with Seneff. Now Busby, three on four going forward for Chapman. Lindfelt, hawked down by Hearn. And Hearn with the defensive stifling. Very well defended from Wheaton there. That could have been very dangerous, Nico. Kildy. Wells and Hamilton battling it out near the 30-yard line. 
Freeing running in with some room. Freeing into the back of the net. That is a beautiful finish off the half volley, Nico. Jonah Freeing, first goal of the season, and does it with some style. Chapman goes up one to nothing. And you see Nico from the build up play to that, they were passing the ball around, and luckily enough, he was able to get his left foot on the execution of that and be able to slot into the back the of the net. Gray Hill left stunned, definitely going to need to have some communication with his back line about what happened there. But in the meantime, Jonah Freeing did nothing else, but what else does a striker do? Fends off Jones and puts it right into the back of the net with a beautiful left-footed strike. That was just perfect from Chapman's top scorer from last season. To show that physicality against a defense that is as strong and as tall, like we discussed earlier in the game, Nico, is just phenomenal from him. Great finish, Chapman won, Wheaton zero. Green from Sammamish, Washington. We mentioned his partner in crime, Riley Thomas. Those two grew up together, played high school ball together, now at Chapman as seniors. And Price Anderson tried going for it all against Glenn right off the kickoff. Maybe a bit of a rush decision, you have to say, there from our key player for Wheaton. Cheeky try right there from Anderson, but a player of his talent, you can never left him, leave him unsupervised because God only knows what he can do with that soccer ball. Now Haley lofts it over to the goal scorer, Freeing. And we absolutely have to give credit as well to Jackson Busby feeding in that assist, playing it into the space where it was dangerous for that Wheaton defense. And so far, the versatility on this man. Not many players can play the way that you can. We see it all the time. You saw it with FIFA cards where you had these players who were center backs that were 99 rated at striker for some reason. Jackson Busby might be one of those guys who can actually do it all at every point in the field. The perfect definition of a player who can do every single position on the field. We saw Busby last year play forward, play up on the field. Now he's in defense. He's really, as captain, a controller of the whole team, Nico. Senef unable to keep that one in. And now, how does this approach change? Or how does the approach change for Coach Steve McGrath? All those players on the Wheaton sideline have stopped warming up, but they're still standing, trying to stay loose. Now with the one goal deficit on their hands. No adjustments, it looks like, coming from Coach Carrillo's side of the 50. And Busby there had done an excellent job of holding up the ball, waiting for his teammates to come help, and then luckily being able to play the simple pass to keep possession of all of his team. Seven shots in to two in favor of Chapman. Most of those going wayward. But the one time that it mattered, Jonah Freeing slots at home, and the Panthers go up one to nothing here. Just 19.30 remains in this first half. What does Wheaton have in store? Now with Johnson. Away by Jackson. And Wheaton's really putting on the pressure, cramming all their players into wherever, whichever side the ball is on. Like we just saw a few minutes ago, they were really putting on the pressure and pressuring Chapman and getting Price in the backfield, playing balls through him. So pressure's on by Wheaton for sure. There you see Mason Louth just on your screen. Timmy Jones. The one who had to battle it out with Freeing before the goal. But Louth, the main supplier of those assists last season, seven, a team high. Most of those going towards Anderson and Johnson in the box. High up for that header was Chung. A potential mistake there for the Panthers. Johnson fended off it. And Busby away with experience. Busby is there again controlling his team and coming in whenever they need his help. He has held that middle midfield like an engine does in a car. Free kick taken quickly. And Glenn with the nice grab. Glenn again has been able to come off his line, been super quick on his feet tonight, Nico, and he's been very impressive in this first half. A lot of those high through balls going towards the direction of Anderson. He absolutely is the definition of a target man up front. But so far, unsuccessful. You have to give a lot of credit to a guy like Alex Lynn, who has just been so consistent over these past few years. Got his real breakthrough as a sophomore last year. Now gets, again, another season as the starter. Perhaps, though, if we see a few mistakes, as a bit of an entanglement there near the 25, as it'll go against Lindfelt on the far side, Caden Yamada. 
The other one's still in there, the sophomore. And Crayhill coming out to argue his point there. Not very often do you see a goalie come out to the 25-yard line to argue a point, but hey, that's just leadership from the tall goalie. Well, chiming up one to nothing here. Just over 17 minutes remain. How surprised are you seeing that there are no substitutions that have been made from either side as this game continues to progress? I'm very surprised to not have seen any substitutions yet from Wien because of their style of play. They're playing very quickly. And speaking of the devil, coming in for Chapman, four players, Isaac Storms, Marco Rodriguez, Evan Crownfield, who had started most of those games to begin with, and Dylan Payne comes in for the likes of Garrett Linfelt, the captain, Jackson Busby. An unusual sub off for him early in this first half, as well as Cooper Haley and Connor Kildee. Definitely not used to seeing that with a guy like Busby, who really is a 90 minute player through and through for Eddie Carrillo almost every single game. Of course, and he's been so important in that midfield, keeping everyone together, communicating. It's an interesting substitution choice, but Carrillo did bring on Crownfield, the young freshman. He's been amazing this year so far, so I'm sure he'll bring some great energy to the field. Crownfield already with one goal, kind of a quintessential midfielder that you want in there, burst of energy. And Jackson all the way up near the touchline to make that defensive play. Some of the subs, you can see it clearly with that moment of pressure. They're bringing more energy to fight off Wheaton's very high line. They're, Wheaton's playing very quickly, so I think it was a good move from Coach Korea to be able to bring in four subs. So in response for Wheaton, coming on is Jack Kerr, number 27, as well as Andrew Hiringa. Price Anderson will come off. And the last of those subs, Cooper Falling, the freshman. Not a lot of freshmen that make it into this Wheaton squad. Garrett Belcher has done well to earn his spot in the 11. But Cooper Falling, one of the other ones who's gotten some time in that rotation, getting some bulk minutes early in his career. And it's good to see that too, Nico, because first few years of college, especially for soccer, you want to establish yourself and show and prove your point. So it's good to see a few of the younger guys from Wheaton come in and help their team out. So four fouls each for both of these teams. Heavy point of emphasis for both of them. Seems to be a pretty chippy game so far. Chapman's last game, they already have more fouls in this one, four than they did when they were in New, when they were in Jersey, only getting the three. So a lot more at stake, you think, here, Nico? Potentially, as this game continues to wear on, all the front line for Wheaton, now that we realize it, has come off for those substitutions. Seems like that deadly front three just has not seemed to have that same edge here tonight lofted over to freeing gets past Hearn gliding past Belcher and down he goes just outside the box but it's going to go against freeing and that is a handball call against Freeing. the refs have been very very good so far I feel like they've been allowing lots of physicality but also been able to you know keep the players quiet and keep them in check so I think that was a great call now Jones still going forward. Kern pursued down by Chung. And just beyond his reach. And Sometimes that is, hard that, to see with those lines out there, trying to figure out which one exactly is your last line of defense. And that is great defending from Chapman. He held his body, he held the line, and he was able to get the ball back to his goalie. Payne. Storms back to Galvin. And Glenn now has Glenn. been... He's been on the ball so many times in this first half, playing off his line, distributing amazingly. He's been stupendous in this first half, Nico. Wells out wide. Now Galvin. And Chapman in this first half have for sure been able to take advantage of the space that Wheaton's been allowing them to have. Letting, allow, trying to switch the play, trying to play on the left wing, right wing. They've been doing a great job at being able to pass the ball and keep possession. So Frazier up for the throw. New sense of that right side with Crownfield and Payne. Payne steps away from one now with Freeang. That one ricochets in the box, still anyone's ball. And Freeing will let it roll out for a Chapman corner. Some impressive play so far from both these sides. Dylan Payne, a guy who's struggled with consistency in front of the goal throughout this season, as Frazier to loft it in. Crayhill 
let it sail over. And that's a dangerous ball from Chapman to be able to whip, to have a player who can whip the ball in like that with inside of the foot, get the spin on it, curl it. It's super difficult to deal with as a goalie, but Grayhill's been very good at dealing with those balls in the air so far. You'd have to say outside of that one goal conceded, which in my opinion, honestly, probably wasn't even that much of his fault. You could argue that he should have come out sooner, but a bit of a miscommunication from him and his defensive line. Ultimately sees him go down one nothing. Sam Grotolution awaits to come on for Wheaton in defense. But in the meantime, can they spur on a counterattack and get past this pesty Chapman defensive back line? Not too much involvement when it comes to distribution wise for Crayhill in comparison to Glenn. Wheaton's been playing higher lines, maybe. Who knows? It could be because of the higher pressure, or it could be could be because so well, Chapman has more trust in Glenn. So Grotolution on for Belcher, who just conceded that throw. As for the Panthers, on comes Evan White, the freshman out of Tiburon, California, for Leo Wells as well as number 13 Diego Perez. Coming on for the goal scorer, Jonah Freeing. It has to feel good for him getting his first goal of the season, especially after leading this team last year. Yeah, and especially to give more kudos to Jonah Fring. The ability to hold up the ball and take the ball and make it your own almost was amazing from him. Quick key pass from White. Now with Jackson. Rodriguez outside the box. And Kern does well defensively. Now Jack Kern with some space in front. Trying to time his run was Hiringa. Holds on to the ball for a bit too long. We have been playing on the counterattack a lot, and even though they're a taller team, they have been doing pretty successfully at it. So Jackson goes down quickly. The challenge from Senef. Panthers up one to nothing in this game here against Wheaton. Went 11, six and two last season. Won six out of eight games in their conference. As for the Panthers, just three wins, six draws, trying to avoid the same fate here against a non-conference opponent. On collision course so far. And once again, Glynn off this line quickly. You mentioned, especially as a former goalkeeper, how important is it for your goalkeeper to be so decisive in that, especially against a high counter-attacking team like Wheaton. I mean, Glenn so far has been phenomenal. And yeah, to have quick feet and understanding when to come out, when to hold the line is second to most important thing for being a goalie. And Glenn tonight has done an excellent job at being able to read it, cut passes and be good overall. And once again, right there, you have to wonder potentially at the halftime break, just under 10 minutes remaining left in this first half is wide open on that far side with Jackson. You don't want to say that they have to change their identity, but definitely does the approach have to change from going so counterattack to, to a bit more possession, especially against an inexperienced Chapman midfield. If I was Wien's coach right now, I would put in uh, maybe one or two more midfielders instead of the forwards and just lock down the midfield. Keep the ball, get your position rate up, and just knock it around a bit to frustrate the Chapman team. Well, both of these sides rocking that 4-3-3 formation Perhaps an overload in the midfield could swing the odds in Wheaton's favor. And Chapman doing a really good job to hold on to that ball and not give Wheaton anything. Storms one off it. Now Senef. Out to Timmy Jones. Timmy Jones getting into a little scuffle, doing a good job to hold on to that ball. And you mentioned hold-up play as something that could be very much an important type of thing, especially for Wheaton. As a counter-attacking side, you need those attackers but to be able to play that well. But for some of these defenders who haven't been able to get upfield as much, they also need to be able to pull that out of their hat early in this match. Good defending from Chapman right there to be able to hold him off. So two substitutions come on, one for each side. David Vez of the freshman out of Allen, Texas, on for the Thunder. Off comes Natty Hamilton. Wesley Jackson makes his way off the pitch as in comes number 12, Alex Vazquez. Another one of these freshmen. And we continue to mention the amount of youth that's on this field right now. Some inexperienced guys 
being asked to hold on to the lead shows the trust that Eddie Carrillo has in his side going forward. It truly does, and it's great to have a coach who trusts their players and trusts the younger guys to understand their role and know that they are going to execute it. Bit of nifty dribbling there from Galvin after almost finding himself in trouble. Now Vazquez with his first action of the game. And it's confusing. You can see Wheaton really cramming back and almost parking the bus with almost every single one of their players except for one of them in their own half at the moment. Of course, Chapman applying the pressure, but when you're losing 1-0, Nico, usually you'd like to put at least a few more up front. That one will go out for a Chapman throw. Off the boot of Cooper falling. Was a high school state champion in Oklahoma at Edison Prep. Yamada all the way forward. Galvin deals with the excess. Now Storms, junior transfer out of Puget Sound. One off of it by Yamada. Now six and a half minutes remaining. You have to wonder, you don't really want to be making all these changes towards the end of the half. Do both these coaches just let these squads run it out and see what they can produce, especially with many young guys out there on the field for both sides? Yeah, Nico, typically in the last six, five minutes, I like to call it helter-skelter. Both teams going at it, both teams flying, and like we just saw, flying slide tackle gives Chapman a free kick in a dangerous area. John Hearn out of coming Georgia. Picks up the foul and a dangerous free kick towards the end of this half for the Panthers. And this is the last thing you want when there's five and a half minutes left on the clock, Nico. You're tired, there's fatigue starting to kick in because they've played a, almost a whole 45 minutes. And now you have a free kick on the 17 yard line. So we could be danger from Chapman here. Two freshmen standing over at Perez. Line drive right into the wall. Frazier does well to win it back. And that ball continues to pinball around before going out for a Wheaton throw. Bit of a missed opportunity, you have to say, from Perez off of that free kick attempt. Yeah, and you know, lots of strategy goes behind free kicks, Nico. You practice them every single day in practice. You go over routines, names for the routines. But on that one, unfortunately, maybe just failed attempt. Panthers lead one to zero here at Wilson Field. First game back at Wilson in two weeks for the Chapman Panthers. Wien concluding a two game road trip out to the West Coast now with a chance to pounce. Lofted over and nowhere near any Wien players as Glenn comes out of his net once again. Now Crownfield. Glenn has been phenomenal in being able to read those crosses and come out and catch them so far, Nico. Now with Payne. Perez, Chapman trying to get numbers forward. Wien overloading the box with defensive men. And cleared away by Lortolution. Glynn sends it the other way. So far, Wheaton hasn't been as dominant in front of, when it comes to headers in comparison to Chapman. But they are still playing the back line through balls into one runner. It's been very dangerous so far, Nico. So far, you have to be impressed with the Chapman back line. I mean, as much as Glynn has been impressive throughout this game in goal, definitely up for consideration of man of the match, at least man of the first half. This back line, Galvin had to be a bit safe, not knowing if that was offsides on Herringa. Of course, and the back line has been amazing so far in this first half. They've held very strong and very physical players. And so far, well, it, Glenn's chasing his clean sheet, and at the moment he has it. So hopefully we'll be able to see a performance like this in the second half as well. Well, if there's one thing that we've seen over those two games in New Jersey, is Galvin somehow keeps it away. That is amazing from Galvin. As Rodriguez into no man's land. Only Jones around for Wheaton. But there's one thing to be said about their performances in the second half. Obviously had to claw their way back against both of those teams. 
So perhaps a little bit different of an approach, at least mentally, and on the scoreboard for Chapman heading into this second period. But they definitely know how to step it on the gas in that last 45. Perez tried looking for White. Now sent it forward. And that is exactly when you need Price Anderson there, ready and eager to be able to come out, wait for the ball, and then snatch it up as it's played through. Now with Chung. That one goes out for a Chapman throw. So far, you'd have to like the way that this freshman unit, mostly freshman unit, you have to say for Chapman, the way that they've been playing, maybe not asked to go out there, tack on a few more goals. Obviously, you obviously hope that, but they've been able to hold Wheaton at bay, not really allowing them to get any attack in progress. We'll see if that changes here. Of course, and like you were talking about, the freshman team, they've been able to really solidify their strength, hold off big guys, and they've done an excellent job so far. As the offside flag goes up on Hiringa, minute and a half left in this first half. Pretty evenly contested on both sides of the team. I mean, both have had lots of opportunities to be able to score goals, and luckily for Chapman, we've been able to execute the one bouncer. So eight shots from the Panthers, just two from the Thunder. Glenn's had a busy night of work, except not so much on his target. In the last few minutes of a halftime, always get a little bit chippy. We can see some of the guys maybe dropping the shoulder a little bit, running into each other a bit more, but that's to be expected, Nico. Stepped away there by Vasquez. And Wheaton really putting on the pressure in these last few moments. Now wide with Grota Lucian. Jones swivels his way through. Hearn. Chapman claims for off sides. Now Senef, room to shoot. And the first real chance for Wheaton coming just at the end of the first half. And Alex Glenn caps off an excellent first half once again with a fantastic save. And that is an amazing save to be able to get that low to the left side and not only stop the ball from going into the net, but to hold on to it, Panther-like reflex from Chapman's number one. Chapman's number one indeed has been on fire here tonight as they hold a clean sheet through and through in the first half. They lead one to nothing. A lot to be impressed with in this first half from especially that defensive unit for the Chapman Panthers. For sure, Nico. It's been very tight so far, but so far Chapman's just about to have that little edge on Wheaton and, well, 1-0 Panthers. Well, Wheaton, they came into this one with a two-game losing streak. Now, perhaps on the cusp of making that three. For a team that won 11 games, it's definitely uncharacteristic what needs to happen in that second half for them to change this and turn this game around. For Wheaton, I think they need to start locking down possession more, you know, playing around more with the ball, not forcing it up the field, long balls, dri driven balls, just trying to hold onto the ball, get that possession percentage up a bit, and just kind of feel the game out as it goes on. Well, as that game goes on, definitely something that we have to keep an eye out for is how this Chapman attack continues to progress as this game goes forward. A lot of shots on perhaps challenging Greyhill, but not really getting anything in front besides the free-hand goal. Of course, apart from the free-hand goal, which was excellently executed, Chapman hasn't had too much of a shot. We had that one really good save from Greyhill, but apart from that, I think they need to maybe pressure him a bit more, put some more crosses into the box, maybe swing a few more from the corners. But so far, they're leading 1-0, so they must have done something right. So far, they've been fantastic. As we take a look at what has happened throughout this first half of offensively, it's been a lot of freeing, a lot of a little bit of Wells. We haven't seen much of him. You mentioned that earlier in the half. But as well as Garrett Linfelt, he's been kind of the main man who's been getting those touches. As we're actually going to throw it to our very own Ainsley Savant, who has Garrett Linfelt's mom on standby. Ainsley, what do you got for us? Thanks, Nico and Lucas. I am here with Don Linfelt, Garrett Linfelt's mom, and I just, you're so passionate out here. We are up one to zero, Chapman is. Um, and so I just wanted to know, what are your thoughts on this game so far? 
I think they're doing an amazing job. Uh, I think they're being very aggressive. It's been fun to watch. I think we could use a little bit more help in the stands, a little bit more um, enthusiasm. But I think overall, I think they're doing a great job. Yeah. yeah. We need more passion out here, don't we? Yeah. We need a lot more passion out here. I think I'm the only one screaming, and it's a little embarrassing at times. But. I, I love it. I love that you're so passionate. And so do we have, do you have any advice for the Chapman team? Um, anything you want to see from your son Garrett or the Chapman team in general? I think that they're, I mean, they're all very talented. They all know what they're doing. At this point, sometimes I don't always think they need the coach to tell them what to do. I think they are motivated and they're inspired and they know what they're doing on the field and sometimes they need to just kind of go with it and let the coach just kind of let them do their thing but I mean I'm not a coach I've never been a coach I've just had four boys that have played soccer forever and I just think that sometimes the kids just need to keep playing but anyway I just think that we need a little bit more spirit out here however we can get it well, thank you so much, Don. I love your spirit. I love your passion. We need a little bit more of that, of that out yes, here. Yes, yes you're but darling. thank you. Thank for you so much. Thank you. All right, I'm sending it back to you guys up in the booth. Thank you so much, Ainsley. And that spirit, we have been missing that a little bit from both of these sides. Chapman obviously getting that goal in the middle of that first half, but definitely, you want to just keep on seeing them play. And Eddie Carrillo, he didn't have to make many adjustments early in that first half as a reason. Why Chapman's up 1-0, and, and Wien still hasn't scored on that score sheet. Of course, and Chapman, I believe, has been playing the better game. You know, they've been keeping the ball more, playing around with the possession, and also, of course, Jonah Frame with a beautiful left-footed volley to increase the score to 1-0. But so far, I think that Wien maybe needs to compact themselves a bit more, maybe play around with the ball more, but who's to say? Well... As we take a look at what this first half had in store for us, these highlights, they've been all over this one. As Price Anderson got us kicked off, Caden Yamada launching it all the way forward. It's been a back and forth battle, got chippy at times. And as you mentioned, Chapman, they've been the team that's been on that forefront more often than not. For sure, and we can see in many of these highlights that Chapman really have been gunning out of here. We see a great save from Crayhill, but Chapman for sure has been really on the front foot, getting the shots, getting the runs in behind, and hopefully executing a bit more in the second half. And as we continue to see Alex Glenn, he's been all over this game. You as a former goalkeeper, high praises for him. How important is it for him to continue that type of streak going into the next 45? Of course, the highest praise for Alex Glenn. I mean, he's been phenomenal in this first half. He's picked up so many balls that have gone into the box. He's cut off so many passes. And so far, he'll be very eager to get his clean sheet. But of course, he received the finish by Jonah Fring. Amazing finish with his left foot off the volley. Very difficult finish to execute. And he's done excellent in this first half. Well, while the rest of his teammates were celebrating, Eddie Carrillo, still calm and composed, knows that there's still a lot of time left in this game that they have to battle back with. And hopefully, hold on to this lead, pick up another win. They've yet to draw this season after coming up with six last year, all in the conference. Hard foul there, good bit of gamesmanship from Brock Seneff to Wesley Jackson. And overall, a back and forth battle between both of these teams. Got chippy at times, but nothing has spoiled over yet. Maybe a bit of a telltale sign that these guys aren't really division rivals. Of course, and you love to see that, Nico. You love to see passion, you love to see sly tackles, but it's good that they've been able to stay composed and focus on the ball. Well, no doubt about that. The rest of this second half has a lot in store with us. 45 minutes left to decide a winner, one to nothing in favor of Chapman. It's been great having you with us, and we're gonna send it over to our very own halftime as we get ready for the next 45. Lucas, it's gonna be a good one. Yes, it is, Nico.
pull from a stripe up. Neck used to have a knife on. Looking in the mirror and I got that ice on it. And it's iconic. And it's ironic. I'm getting paid just to put together phonics. Had to keep my focus. Had to kill the locus. Dreaming about this moment even when I felt the lowest. Now I'm making waves. Yeah, I feel the roses. He turned up and I was steady coast. It's the arrival. I came in the league, went straight for the title. No time to idle. I finna get it, put that on a Bible. This is survival. Gotta treat every movement like the final. One by a mile. Nobody believe it, they all in denial. Hey, look at me, look at me. Still in the show, that's the crook in me. They want me gone with the hook in me. Asking why is he here like I shouldn't be. I've been on grind since I do 10,000 hours the motto. They see the bag is coming out and flocking to me like yeah. I won the lotto. Dancing with the devil, there's no recital. I'm killing competition, ain't no revival. I shoot it to kill it, I'm aiming for vitals. I'm showing no mercy when facing my rivals. Snakes in the crash, they getting exposed. I know they be lurking, I'm watching them close. Acting like friends, but really they foes. Thought they be scheming and said adios. Hey, back with a vengeance, back on the grinds, back to the business. Hey, God is my witness, they watching my moves like shows they binging. Hey, best keep distance, all of my haters send best of wishes. I get to the bag with the quickness, no, I don't need no assistance. No. Yeah, no playing it safe. I said, let's get it, you say not today. What can I say? You ain't gonna go for it, get out the way. Yeah, got no time to waste. Can't be with me if you're not at my pace. You're not at my level, you're not at my race. One foot on the gas, I'm yeah. pushing the yeah. You're dancing with the devil, there's no recital. I'm killing competition, ain't no revival. I shoot it to kill it, I'm aiming for vitals. I'm showing no mercy when facing my rivals. Snakes in the crash, they're getting exposed. I know they be lurking, I'm watching them close. Acting like friends, but really they foes. Saw they be scheming and said adios. Get it on my set.
And welcome back to Wilson Field. Great to have you with us. The Chapman Panthers up one to nothing on the Wheaton Thunder after 45. Another 45 to come. Great to have you with us. Nico Schweigler, that's Lucas Patton. We'll be joined momentarily by Ainsley Savant down on the sidelines. But Lucas, fantastic half for the Chapman Panthers, especially coming off that two game losing streak in New Jersey. Of course, and they've shown all the energy that we were talking about before the game. They've been really going at it, high pressure, high velocity. You know, they've been passing it around a lot. Glenn has been phenomenal in this first half. He's been coming off his line, anticipating all the shots and cutting off everything and keeping the defense with a clean sheet so far. Well, goalkeepers were a big point of emphasis for both these teams, particularly Wheaton. They, move, they lose Mason Scalante to injury in that CMS game on Thursday. Jack Crayhill comes into the game for his first start of the year. But it's been all Alex Glenn in net for the Chapman Panthers, who's been fantastic all night long, really reading those three balls and getting out ahead of that Wheaton attack. Yeah, Cray Hill hasn't needed to deal with too much in this first half. Of course, he had that one very good save, but Glenn in this first half has been flying around the place, cutting crosses off, anticipating through balls. He had that really good save on the last play of the last half. So, so far, extremely consistent and very good performance from Alex Glenn. Well, fantastic so far from the Panthers. Eddie Carrillo sure has to be happy with the way that his team is playing right now. And as he gets this starting lineup back out there, Evan Crowfield actually joining that lineup out in the 11. So we'll see how that plays out. But a lot of freshmen made their first few appearances in a while. And now it's that youthful, inexperienced side for the Chapman Panthers trying to gain that experience against a rather upperclassman heavy. Wheaton side, headed by Steve McGrath, trying to lead his team back to another victory and get back in the win call. Of course, and I'm sure Steve McGrath right now is going over how he can maybe modify how his team's playing or maybe some change that he needs to make for the team. But so far, pretty contested game so far, Nico. So Mason Louth makes his way back into the game. Luke Vanderkolk also into the game for the first time. No Price Anderson. Doesn't look like Kyle Johnson's out there either. So. Unlike the Chapman Panthers, who relatively sticking with their starting 11, some big changes made from Steve McCrath coming out of the break. And I think that's a smart move to keep Price Anderson on the bench. Save him, you know? He's like a secret weapon to the Wheaton team. Save him for later and then unleash him so he can tear up. We did mention earlier when highlighting his performances as Freehan gets us kicked off, he only plays about 54 minutes a game so far in his three appearances. We'll see how his time management is loaded here tonight. Busby back in the midfield. And it's important to see Busby back in the midfield so we can start talking to his midfielders, organizing his defenders, and really being the engine of that midfield. Over the top from Jackson to Freeang, the lone goal scorer of that first half. Watch guarded by Yamada. Freeang tried the curler, not sure if he was expecting someone to make a run at the back post, perhaps a shot towards Gray Hill's net. Ultimately, no damage for Wheaton's number one. And I'm sure Clay Hill's going to be really watching out for Fring now that he knows that he has that attacking prowess. He has a very good foot, both left and right. So I'm sure that he'll be watching out for him now. Expertly brought down by Louth, but expertly defended by Wesley Jackson. Jackson coming out of Encinitas, California. He got bumped from that starting 11 a few times ago. He made his first appearance in New Jersey against Montclair State. Now miking his way back into the groove in this starting 11 was just so impressive last season for the Panthers as a sophomore. And so far as the game has developed so far, he seems to be maybe coming back to that performance, that consistency that he had last season. So it's great to see. Penner out wide to Jones. And knocked away well by Cormac Galvin. That is a great slide tackle to see. You love to see defenders putting their whole body on the line, defending the line, defending their team, and you love to see it, Nico. Well, Galvin, one of those guys who, when he gets the opportunity, he's gonna go in for that slide, and he's one who usually doesn't miss as often as you would have won. And so, now getting a little bit more work, and who else but Alex Glenn? High jumping save. And that is a great read from Glenn. He had one of their forwards right there on top of him, and he was still able to keep his composure and collect the ball. Wells working his way back all the way into the defense. Now Wells glides through, takes a tumble with his former high school teammate, Caden Yamana. And you love to see that, Nico. 
I mean, that was an intentional foul, of course. Momentum just brought him on him. But you love to see him maybe getting into a little scuffle with his former teammate. Bringing back memories from high school. Perhaps we'll see a little bit more of that matchup. Didn't really get to see it that much in the first half, but I'm sure both of those guys, if they get into a one-on-one -on -one situation, it'll be serious, but it'll be a little bit of bringing back the old good times. And done away with well by Frazier. And Wheaton seems to be playing the high pressure. We saw as Chapman kicked off that they really ran to go get the ball, Nico. So maybe they're still playing the high pressure possession game, but who knows? That was Cooper falling, unable to get through. So the freshman makes the start in the first half over the likes of Kyle Johnson. And now some room for the Panthers to work. Busby left alone in the middle. Jackson Busby invited to shoot. And that is dangerous for Cray Hill. I cannot imagine having someone like Busby line up a shot and take a shot against me. The four-year veteran, he was here when they won the championship in 2022, so. The all Skyak first-teamer, usually known for his prowess on the defensive side as center back, makes his first start, I believe, of his career at that central midfield position. Also previously played at Whittier, where he was a standout defender as a freshman. And like I said in the first half, Nico, you love to see guys who just go out and play simple soccer. They can play up, they can play down, they can play left, they can play right. You love to see players like Busby. That ricochets off the foot of Seneff, who's made his way out wide. Brock Seneff, we saw a lot of him working from the midfield, a little bit of a defensive midfielder. But he played forward very much in that first half. Now out wide, playing a bit of that left mid, left wing back type of role. And having to roll a left wing back is almost pivotal. Wing backs are always in charge of just covering the wing, and so far, he's done a pretty decent job on it, if you ask me. Well, Lucas, when I asked you about formational changes, I definitely didn't expect, maybe it's not a five back, but for Coach Steve McCrath to spread out the wings the way that he has, you would have thought that he would have concentrated more players in the middle of that field. So far, he's done quite the opposite. Hasn't quite worked out in these first five minutes the way that they would have liked. It is a very curious choice by the coach because I originally maybe took a guess that they would have played three in the back and then had some wing backs come down. But so far, he seems to be spreading his team out pretty thin. Now with Chung. Dylan Chung, who's played every single minute of this match, becoming a mainstay already as a freshman. A little trickery there from Freeang. You love to see the roulette spin, don't you, Nico? A little spin on the wheel. Why not? Why? Usually works out for him anyways at the jackpot. And that just really emphasized the confidence that he's playing with now after he scored that first goal. He's just a man on a mission out there tonight, Nico. Linfelt waiting for the cavalry to arrive. Busby spins away from one, being hawked down by Sen of captain on captain. And a battle between those two out on the far side. That's a tough battle right there, Nico. You know that Busby will not simply allow someone, especially because he's the captain, to run him over because that kind of shows that Hey, I can run you over, I can run the team over. So that's great to see him be a little chippy. You know, not, nothing crazy, but defending his team and defending his role as captain. Well, he is an engineering major, so using that methodical mind to his advantage, orchestrating everything for this Chapman Symphony. And as this Linfeld steps over it with a dangerous free kick right now for Chapman, Lucas. Knocked away, and Timmy Jones clears it for the moment. A stoppage in play, Wheaton's not going to be happy about that as it goes off the back of the referee. No. Bit of chaos right there off the ricochet. Lots of pinball soccer in the first few moments, Nico. My old former coach, Chip Fuller, always used to say, the first five minutes and the first last five minutes are the most pivotal and difficult moments of the game because there's so much going on. Pinballing, balls in the air, helter-skelter, like I said, Nico. Falling, spins away from one. Jones was in the area. Lau just couldn't bring it down in time. And Chapman does need to watch out for those crosses because Wheaton, like we previously talked about, has a significant amount of height difference in comparison to Chapman. So Chapman needs to be careful with those crosses. Well, they have sacrificed some of that height, including as well for some inexperience. Some of these freshmen coming in, maybe not as tall as the usual 11 that we're used to seeing. We'll see if that matches up better with this Chapman side going forward. Chung. Floats it away towards that Wheaton bench. And that is a good out by Chunk because if he was to let that ball 
even go by him a little bit. He had the runner in behind, and that would have caused lots of problems for Alex Glenn and goal. Thunder still asking questions. The Panthers not answering back, though. And Chung continues to impress on the defensive side. When you consider the defensive depth that the Panthers have had throughout these past few seasons, it was quite surprising to see him in that opening game get the start and just impress from the get-go. And he's been someone who not only has impressed in that debut, but has seemingly got more and more minutes, played his first 90 in that last match against Montclair. And now he seems on collision course to do that once again here tonight against Wheaton. He's having a great night defensively at that center back, left back position. He's been locking everybody up, and so far he's had a great job. Once again in the heart of it all, Jones trying to fend off Linfelt. Tussle between those two. And get up, says the referee. Linfelt with some room to run, being chased down by Lauf. And here comes the counterattack that we have seen all night from both teams. And a disappointing touch there for Linfelt. He'll be reminiscing on that one. What could have been off the counter spree. One thing that we, I believe, could do a little bit better at, of course, not to criticize any collegiate athletes, but the time that they take to get the ball and to get it to their teammates. If they really want to have a big impact on this game, maybe they could speed it up a little bit. You can definitely say that the pace that they play with when they have the ball in possession hasn't necessarily been up to the standard that they would like. They like the counter attack, but so far when you're going against a defense that's aggressive, but also has the poise like Chapman does with Galvin and Chung really manning that center back duo. And Glenn has just been unworldly, especially in that first half. Hasn't had to do much action though in this second one through the first 10 minutes. Yeah, back to talking about Glenn. He's been excellent at not just, you know, being a goalie himself and being able to do his job, but to be able to communicate with everyone, to get the ball, slow the game down, tell everyone their roles, and he's been excellent so far with the defensive line. Well, skies that one over freeing as it goes out for a thunder throw. Not too many big throw-ins so far in the second half like we saw in the first half, Nico. Well, you'd have to say it's just they haven't been able to find the attacking positioning because the Chapman defense has been relentless so far. Knocked up in the air by Wesley Seneff. Mentioned to him in the first half, did not play the first two years in college. Brother of Brock Seneff, the captain of this Thunder team, gets his first minutes of this second half. And falling through the uprights. Three points on any other Saturday. Unfortunately, stays zero as Chapman continues to lead one to nothing. Alex Glenn, for as much work as he's done, he really hasn't had to make any crucial saves besides that one right before the end of the half. That's true, Nico, and as a goalie, you kind of want to keep it that way, right? He's been very good at understanding when he needs to come out, cutting off to situations that could have led to him needing to make saves, but so far he's been very professional about how he's been doing. Now with Lau. Well, the few starters that's back in this lineup, 11 v 11, as well as Wins it off him. Now Busby, two on two for the Panthers. Up ahead to Linfeld. Freeing the overlapping run. Jonah Freeing takes the shot just wide. He would have wanted that one back. And that is a dangerous, dangerous play from Chapman. As you can see, well, as a, they're a team, they all ran up and tried to make that happen. And of course, we saw Freeing almost score his brace for tonight. Well, Eddie Carrillo has to be pleased with what he's been seeing so far from his team. So, but so far, just one goal to their name. So far, the Chapman team in this half has been electrifying. They've been running around, cutting off plays like that that just happened. They've been very solid defensively, and on offense, they've been pretty decent as well. Just beyond the reach of Busby. Off the flick from Chung. Linfelt. Applying the pressure to Yamada. And that's risky play from Wheaton's defenders right there. Dribbling in the back as a defender is one of the most dangerous things you can do. And if it pays off, it looks phenomenal, Nico. But very high risk move right there from Wheaton. Seneff to Seneff. Jones. And you love to see brothers play on the same team, Nico. Both the Senefs playing on the thing. I can't imagine how proud their mom must be right now, seeing them both play on the same field, on the same night, on the same team. Well, both of these guys, class athletes within their own ranks. You'd have to say even, even though Brock's earned the captaincy, he's been on the team all four years. 
Wesley Senna, considering that it's his first time on the team as a junior, I mean, he was a starter in all four games so far this year. Did not get the nod in the 11 here tonight. But he was a captain. He was a star player as Linfelt makes the run in behind and it just goes into the side netting. And those opportunities right now coming at a premium for Chapman. And right now, just the free angle goal in the first half, the only one that's been able to convert. Yes, sir. And Linfield did a very good job on being able to hold his body, wait for the run, and then go to not the offside. And frankly, it was good contact with the ball, but just straight a little bit wide of the post. But plenty of opportunities for Chapman in the second half so far, Nico. Out wide to Seneth, looks for the long ball again. Guess who's back again, Cormac Galvin. And Cormac Galvin has been phenomenal in the defense so far, Nico. We've seen him cut off so many plays, talk to his D-line, talk to his goalie. So, so far, he's been great. Now with Hearn all the way up from defense. But we, that's the thing, when they get forward, they seemingly just don't have enough numbers because the counterattack really isn't there. And now, when you look at that, Hearn all the way up from defense leaves them vulnerable at the back. Yamada trying to fend off Wells and Lindfeldt. And our first real action at the former teammates going one-on-one. -on -one. Wells, not gonna get that one. Looks for some sympathy from the referee. Does not get it any. As Connor Kildy comes into the game for the first time in this second half. Started the beginning of that first as Crownfield came into his place. Not much happening for number 31 though in this second half. A uh, rather quiet game, but you know, every single player on the team, Nico, has to earn their spot. They have to work hard. Blood, sweat, and tears goes into just being able to get on this field. So I'm sure as the second half continues on, he'll be able to peach it up a bit and hopefully have a big influence on the game. Well, Kildy has definitely come into his own this season. Didn't get much playing time last year as a freshman. He was the lone assister of the one goal that Chapman scored against Stevens during that New Jersey road trip where they were outscored five to one. Scoring doesn't seem like it's really been to Chapman's favor so far this match. But holding a 1-0 lead, you'll be happy with any win, especially one that just keeps on going up in the win column going forward. That's so true, Nico, and especially from Alex Glinspot, holding that clean sheet. I'm sure that for the rest of the game, he will be gunning to be able to keep that clean sheet. And hopefully as the game goes on, we'll see if he can. So Penner goes quickly to Veza. Clean sheets of the utmost importance for this Chapman side. Lost a little bit of its defensive identity through the first three games where they conceded those eight goals being outscored by one. Yamada goes down hard. And that is great pressure from Linfield to see the ball rolling a bit smaller and to immediately pounce on it. You love to see the pressure like that, especially from an offense. And we heard from his mom, who was speaking to Ainsley right before the half. Pretty much, they need more spirit. There needs to be a little bit more passion within the eyes of this Chapman offense and just the team as a whole. They've played well, but so far, they haven't really had that extra spark. Neither team really has, but especially for Chapman, you want to put on a show for the home crowd. Of course, and as that just showed that Linfield, maybe he listened to his mom and took her advice, but he's really going at it in this second half. Senef breaks forward, goes down, gets the shove from behind from Kildy. The Wheaton fans starting to love it over here. And this is a dangerous spot for Chapman to be placed in right now, Nico, because Wheaton has lots of height, maybe not as much height as the initial 11 did, but they, regardless, they still have lots of height on this team, and a free kick on the 21-yard line is as dangerous as they could get for Alex Glenn and his defense right now. So Senef, Louth, and Penner, the ones to stand over it, Caden Yamada, Still back all the way at the 40-yard line. Last man in defense for the Thunder. Still trying to stretch out that calf. Maybe got a little bit of a cramp off that pressure from Linfeld. And this is a dangerous free kick right here, Nico. We might be able to see some fireworks here. Five men in the wall for Chapman. Go straight into it. Mouth the taker. Seneth floats it up and over, and it hits the crossbar back into the net, fired away. Cooper falling with his first ever collegiate goal. And he equalizes this game at one apiece. And I'm sure that he is gonna be absolutely stunned with himself for scoring his first collegiate goal away from home. 
with his teammates celebrating. As you can see, they were all together in a big huddle. I'm he sure he must be absolutely buzzing at that goal. There you go. Unbelievable there, just a ricochet play. As Chapman could not cover the spaces. And it's a clinical finish from him, you'd have to say, with the composure. Definitely doesn't look like a freshman out there with that type of finish. Of course, no, it is not an equal. And a bottom corner finish is statistically one of the most difficult shots to save from a goalkeeper's perspective. One all, Nico. So now, Chapman, after leading this game for so long, finds themselves back on level playing terms. And Yamada cannot believe it as he thought he got the best of his former teammate in Wells. Chapman to earn a throw in here. But now, the pressure becomes on Eddie Carrillo to make the necessary adjustments. Only one change so far for him, bringing on Kildy into the starting 11. And you know that a coach as experienced as Eddie Carrillo, you know he's been in this situation a hundred times and over. He understands that the pressure is on, but he also understands, hey, there's 27 minutes left of this game, Nico, so could go anywhere. Busby through ball to Freeing. Freeing works the line. Out in front, falls to Kildy at the back post. And just rolls past. Freeing almost came through, and Chapman with a glorious opportunity could not convert. And that is very unfortunate, Nico. A slow ball across the six yard box to a back post runner is the first thing that you want when it comes to scoring goals. Very close to being a tap in, but Chapman for sure very eager to get up the field and score some more goals. Tough collision there on the near side. Nothing cynical there from Leo Wells, but just using that momentum, running straight into the 6'4", Jack Hearn. John Hearn, excuse me. And you love to see that, Nico. Although it's been very chippy out there, lots of fouls, nothing intentionally or malicious from the players, and you love to see that. Just guys playing soccer. And so far, Glenn is going to be disappointed with himself because of that goal that he gave up. But it seemed to be maybe a lack of communication on his behalf. After we saw him concede the goal, we saw him talking to players, maybe explaining what happened and asking questions of why it happened. Absolutely a point of conversation for Glenn going forward. But now he has to have that thing be the last thing on his mind as they go forward. Two substitutions, one for each team. Oncoming Kyle Johnson for Mason Louth. Evan White makes his way on for the captain, Jackson Busby. So an interesting substitution, bringing off your captain who's been really manhandling the midfield so far. We haven't seen much of that from Eddie Carrillo trying to bring off Busby, but so far tonight, a different recipe in the cookbook for him. No, we have not, Nico, and it is an interesting choice to make, but I'm sure with his 20-odd years of experience coaching here at Chapman, he knows 110% what he is doing. Chapman with the long throw and a slight push from the Wheaton defender there. Maybe could have been called as a foul, but the ref makes the decisions ultimately, so. Now Jackson. Now Reed Leedlin into the game for the first time. He was the scorer of that lone goal on the New Jersey trip. Floats it over for Linfelt. Yamada shields it away. And that it just trickles past. And that was a beautiful pass for the Chapman player right there to find Wells on the left wing. Beautifully lofted, backspin, perfection, Nico. So Crayhill hasn't had to do much so far in this second half in terms of making acrobatic saves coming off his line. But still that six foot five imposing frame, definitely deterring Chapman so far. Two golden opportunities that went into the side netting, one from Freeing and one from Linfeld on the counter. Of course, and so far, Wien's defense seems to be scrambling a little bit, Nico. They had that one scramble in the box that, unfortunately, Chapman wasn't able to capitalize on, but so far, they've been a little bit trembly, I think. Now Wells, out wide, on the way by Wesley Seneff. Through to White. And Chapman right now, it just seems like they're trying to play outside to in, but they're not getting enough guys in the box to really challenge and make that final pass to complete the attacking move and get forward. They are very close to being able to score lots of goals, Nico. They have the pass, they have the energy, they just need that little bit of spark. And then 
it could be goals open open range over here, Nico. A little bit hard to see through their yellow bibbies, but it looks like Price Anderson will be making his way back on. Indeed, it is. So the six foot four target man up front will join Kyle Johnson on the field. Those two combined for over 26 goals last season for the Thunder. And we've seen a lot of action from Leo Wells on this half of the play. He's been lining up a lot against his former high school teammate, and so far, he's been pretty action-packed on his behalf. Vander Kolk steps away from one and just ran into trouble. Seneff does well to get that one away. Getting a little chippy out there, Nico. We're seeing lots of collisions, few sly tackles, so maybe it's a matter of just booting the ball away and settling down a bit. Now Senef. Freeing. Pocket of space in the middle. Now White. And freeing the culprit of that penalty. And that might just be out of frustration from his bad touch, Nico. I mean, it's always frustrating to get a bad touch, but never enough to really do a foul. Well, there's one thing from watching Jonah Freeing for at least a year now coming into this season. He's definitely a passionate guy. Sometimes his emotions can get the better of him at times, but they're showing some nice sportsmanship and you after the fact. And you love to see that, Nico. Being passionate about soccer is the most important thing about the game, and you love that Fring has that. Now let's see if he has the composure, along with the rest of this Chapman front line, to get another one in the back of the net. Yamada over the top. We now has some momentum going for Jones and a critical step in there from Galvin. Still more work to do and Glenn out decisively. Very well caught from Glenn there, waiting for the ball to come here, not rushing anything and then ultimately being able to scoop it up pretty easily. Well, that's a fantastic bit of defense from Noah Penner. Who's Anderson back in before the So Price Anderson indeed will now come back in and this is where Chapman needs to be careful because Price Anderson is an absolute dog of the offense at Wheaton. He runs quick, he's physical, he has a crazy hard shot, so Chapman need to be careful in the next few minutes for sure. So already getting in on the action as he earns another throw in for the Thunder. It's been a bit of a different mindset switch since the goal for Wheaton. They've been able to find that little bit extra gear, now starting to string some passes in the attacking third, really challenging Glenn a bit more on the goalkeeping side of things. Of course, and after you score a goal, there's always that adrenaline of kicking the ball into the back of the net, wanting to get more. So hopefully they'll have some more opportunities. And hey, it's a pretty tight game so far, isn't it, Nico? Indeed it is. And now maybe a bit more trouble for Chapman as they have to defend a corner off the head of Jackson, who's battling with Wesley Seneff, his brother Brock, to take this corner from the near side. And this is where Price Anderson could really leave his stamp on this game, standing very, at a very tall stature, very physical, they need a double team him, I think, Nico. Crowd in that box, two players up near the front. Indeed, it is Anderson, along with Yamada, managing that front post. Three players back near the goal line alongside Glenn, trying to handle Anderson himself. A little bit of scuffle on the goalie. Love to see the physicality of the game, but as a former goalie, just leave us alone on corners. Freeing can do nothing but chest it down, back out of bounds. So Wheaton, you have to say from Seneff, it hasn't been the greatest night from him on set pieces, trying to get that into dangerous places. A lot of things to the near post has worked sometimes, but overall, nothing really challenging Glenn on that one. That ball could have went anywhere, Lucas. Very dangerous ball right there. And back to your point on Seneff, he has been put playing that near post a lot, maybe expecting some you know, bouncing in the box, but if I was him right now, I'd be playing some nice lob balls in the air, leaving time for the players to jump ball the header, and who knows, when it comes to corners, anything could happen, Nico. Busby back in. Now wide to Frazier. And not, and not too much from the Chapman offense in the last few minutes. They've been relatively quiet since Price Anderson has been subbed on, so maybe they need a change of attitude. 
That was a hard tackle there from Linfelt. Hearn gonna give Wells the kicker. And that is a dangerous foul from Wheaton because they leave it right at a spot that's very difficult for the goalie. Well, John Hearn, the frustration starting to boil over there for Wheaton. Definitely looked like there was some contact there off the Linfelt challenge, taking his frustrations out on Wells on the subsequent play. And now, perhaps that could hurt first yellow card of the game. We mentioned it was a little bit chippy, but nothing compared to what we've seen in some of these Skyhawk contests as well as a few other games. But now, perhaps with 18-32 left in this match, who knows what can happen with both these teams tied, trying to get back in the win column. And this is a very difficult situation. As a former goalie, free kicks from this area, maybe around the nine yard line. Because there's such an angle, it's super difficult to figure out if I should come punch it, catch it, or just let my defenders deal with it. And Freeing goes right in front. That was Leedlin who made the run in front. Crayhill, not deterred by it though. And very good job from Crayhill, just expecting the ball, waiting there, not pouncing at it, and ultimately getting a very good catch from it. Falling, fending off his fellow counterpart, freshman. And away by Galvin. We talked a lot about Glenn, we talked a lot about Chung, but we'll continue to talk about Cormac Galvin, who's just been spectacular tonight here. He's been very good, and especially now that he has to defend Wien's star man, Price Anderson, I'm sure he'll be able to continue up his very, good, his very good season so far and his very good performance in this match. So it looks like we will get a long throw in from Brock Seneff. Haven't seen many of those here in this second half, but now Wheaton on the offensive. Skyed in front, falls to Jones. And that is... And Glenn, did he keep it in? Yes, he did. That is very good from Glenn to be able to react that quickly, to be able to pick up the ball and keep it in balance and not give up another corner. Out wide to Jackson. Off the chest of Hearn. And Chapman now back with possession. Alex Glenn has just been fantastic. We've seen some games go back and forth, but when you get a goalkeeper performance like that tonight, it's just something that you can hold your hat on despite even conceding that one goal in the second half. Of course, and it's good to see that that hasn't deterred him, but a chippy foul towards the 10-yard line from Chapman. And Leedlin will pick up his yellow card. So two quick yellow cards out of the booking for both of these squads as Anderson went down hard. And as the end of the game comes towards this last 15 minutes, last 10 minutes, you are going to see both teams start getting a lot more physical, a lot more slide tackles, just because the passions from both teams are so high to win this game, especially after some tough losses in New Jersey recently. No doubt about that. Seneff, the set-piece specialist for this Wheaton squad. Nobody crowding Glenn this time on the ensuing free kick. Anderson at the heart of it all, 6-4. Glenn, cat-like reflexes once again. The Panthers continue to pounce. That is a phenomenal catch from Glenn to be able to catch it in that many bodies with that much pressure around him. And now Linfelt, mistake from Wheaton. Garrett Linfelt one-on-one -on -one with Crayhill. Crayhill with the stop. And that is an amazing save from Crayhill. One-on-one, -on -one. it is a sitter to miss that. Move not over for Chapman. Falls to the feet and Crayhill corrals it in. Lucas. How is Chapman just not scored right there? Obviously fantastic goalkeeping, but unbelievable there for Linfelt, who's gonna have to sleep on that one. And that is every single piece of credit to that save goes exactly to Crayhill. One on one, everything is on the striker to score. And that's also mental, mentally part of the game. Lots of pressure has the striker, so goalies aren't even expected to make those saves. So great save from Crayhill. And we love to see it, Nico, don't we? Hands on the head for Steve McCrath. Almost was seemingly about to chew out his defense for letting that one slip by. Thankfully, his number one, who's actually his number two in choice to mess Mason Scalante, comes up big to keep this one level. I'm sure Scalante is going to be sitting here or wherever he's watching from and be absolutely smiling at how his number two has been performing and representing his team so far. And now Chapman with a chance to counter Yamada. It with conviction to stop Freeing. Both defenses have been on fire in this matchup. Now falling, the goal scorer lofted over and just off the bar. 
Lynn had to play it safe. And a lucky break there for Chapman. Wheaton almost caught him out looking. That is a very lucky break for Chapman. Both teams in the last five minutes have been so back and forth. We love to see both teams gunning for goals, strong defense. It's just a stunning game, isn't it, Ego? That's why it's the world's game. That's why anything can happen. And when it's so back and forth like this, and first set piece that we've seen all night on the far side, it'll be Noah Penner to take this one with the in-swinger. Knocked in front, up in the air, and Hearn just couldn't get it down in time. Went for the lofter as Glenn came out of his net. Alex Glenn, a few moments of scares over these past few minutes. Luckily for him, this game stays tied. And you can see him now playing the ball short, waving his hands, telling his team to maybe calm down. That was a very dangerous ball from the Chapman defender, but like I was saying earlier, Glenn may be telling the team to calm down a bit, maybe play some simple passes and just get their momentum to start building back up. Ball skied over the top. Johnson. Brings it down against Leedland. Jones, unable to step away from Haley. Made that dangerous pass, as you mentioned. Obviously, these guys have been playing for a while, but perhaps the adrenaline of playing in your first few college matches coming to the forefront. And that is a... Body's going flying right now. Yes, they are, Nico. That is a very dangerous slide tackle to make because the momentum of the player being slide tackled because he wasn't running, if you slide tackle him, he's coming right back down on you. And that was almost a football tackle right there, Nico. Well, we'll see what the Chapman football team has in store on October 5th during homecoming. Be sure to tune into that one. They play Whitworth next week in Washington. We definitely don't want to see that here on the soccer field. Senef over the top, Glenn, powerful punch. Now Chapman needs to clear. And that is a great punch from Glenn. And now we see the counterattack maybe starting to start. Busby up to Linfelt. Rather through to Wells. Numbers back for Wheaton. And it shows as Hearn was able to go in strong. And Wells really hasn't been able to turn his motor on in this game, per se. Nico, what do you think about that? Well, you'd have to say that he just hasn't found that same sort of rhythm hasn't been able to find the same type of space that he has and perhaps that six foot four frame of this back line for Wheaton on full display. But now on the other side, Kyle Johnson unable to do anything with that one. And that's a safe decision, Nico, just to be able to get the ball out, calm the team down, maybe reset. But luckily for Wheaton, Crayhill is all the way out of his net. Otherwise, Linfelt might have been the one to get to that one. Skied over Liedlin. Soft touch that goes to Anderson. Veza. Falling. Overlapping run from Senef. And a crucial tackle there from Frazier. Ben Frazier now gets his first time starting as we do have an injury on the back side near the 40-yard line. Looks like it's Noah Penner. Is still a bit shaken up out of McKinney, Texas. And if Noah Penner needs to come out of the game, that is going to be a huge loss for Wheaton because he has been a running machine this whole game. He's been very important to the team, and so far he's been very good. The former Union University player going to need a look at from the trainer. Played all 17 games last year, has started pretty much every single game this year. He is crucial to their 11. Definitely going to need him for their CCIW stuff going forward. And as we take a look at what both these teams have going forward in the next few days, Whitman College come here tomorrow, 11 a.m., a quick turnaround for the Panthers. They kind of need that one. They need this one and they need that one before they have to go to Redlands and play that first opening match of Skyac play. How do you think they fare with 11.44 remaining here as well as another 90 minutes coming up right out of the gate tomorrow morning? Of course, with soccer, everything is momentum. So if they're able to pull this off tomorrow, they have a good shot to play Whitman tomorrow. And if they're able to pull both these games off, then I'm sure when they go to Redlands, they'll have a better than good chance to be able to take that game away as a win. So Penner comes off limping with the trainers. Luke Vanderkoek comes back in his place. Timmy Jones to take, lofted over. And Anderson always a threat as we continue to mention. 
unable to get his head down on that one. And we've seen lots of crosses come to the near post on corners. I feel like that's maybe been one of the most important moves for Wheaton. Maybe they've been trying to create some confusion on the near post and have a bubble go in. And so far, it seems to be working pretty efficiently. Jackson tripped up there by Johnson. You have to say with the play that Glenn has been doing tonight, perhaps that's part of the strategy is not allowing him to come out of his goal or make that really decisive, risky decision to make that diving punch, leave themselves vulnerable at the back so far. Hasn't bitten on it yet. We have seen that from Wheaton. They've been putting Glenn in lots of positions to maybe second guess himself, maybe not fully be confident in what he's doing. And so far, it's 1-1. I guess it's been working so far, Nico. No doubt about that. As for Wheaton coming up, they got U Chicago on September 18th. Rivalry dating back all the way to the 1940s. Wheaton had a 16 game winning streak between 1955 and 72. But they've lost the last five of seven. Hasn't been great for them for their near town rival. No, it has not. And I'm sure there are gonna be some absolute fireworks in that game, Nico. Senef off the leg of Kildy. So just over 10 and a half minutes remaining left in this matchup. Lucas, will either of these teams budge or will it come down to the wire potentially as Anderson starts to make his move? And Johnson, beautifully played there by Jackson, gave a little fist bump knowing that he was able to stray the junior offside. That is dangerous from the defense right there. Maybe it was an offside trick, maybe pulling the line up a bit so he would be offside. But like you mentioned earlier, Nico, the last 10 minutes of every single soccer game is always the most difficult to play as a player. Tensions are high, it's tied game, everyone is tired, and it's really now just a matter of who wants it more. Skied forward by Glenn. Chapman struggling to get that concentration forward as Yamada nods it down, thankfully runs out of room for Senef to pick it up. And Senef dragged down by Kildy. And that's just a show of frustration. You'd like to see it a little bit, especially in a tight game like this, but to drag someone down, it's not very necessary now, is it, Nico? Well, 13 fouls now for the Panthers. We mentioned just three against Montclair. You'd think against the number 12 team in the nation, that might be a little bit higher. But so far, this game getting a bit chippy. One yellow card on each side of the table for both teams. And that is some quick dribbling by Busby right there. You love to see that. Maybe a more defensive player who still has the ability to dribble just like Lionel Messi himself. And Busby continuing to have to do work. Go back to Galvin. Leedland being entrusted with these last few minutes. Knocks off the face of Johnson from Jackson. So Dylan Chung, we spoke his praises early in the match, but so far it's been his Our freshman Rangers, teammate, Rangers, Reed Leedland, who's been getting the latest of the reps in this 11. So as Marco Rodriguez comes in for the throw, how are you expecting him to fare next to now Rodriguez as well as Galvin on that right side? I'm expecting him to fare pretty well. So far the team overall has been pretty consistent, but who knows? Now Wells lofted in, freeing was awaiting. Senef away. And Wells really hasn't been able to start his engine in this game so far. He hasn't been connecting too well with his teammates, but so far, eight minutes left in the game, Nico. There could be fireworks here tonight. Potentially, we'll see them. Disneyland, not the only place to have nightly fireworks. But Price Anderson also trying to supply them there. He awaited that run, trying to judge that last bit of attention that all attackers have to do for the offside trap. Vanderkolk, flicked back to Johnson. And a quiet night for Kyle Johnson, considering the presence that he has down that right wing, now moving in a bit more centrally in these last seven and a half. It has been a very quiet night, but so far, Chapman on offense in general has been doing a very good job. As we could just see by Linfeld's pressure, they've been really going at it, and I'm sure in the next five minutes, there'll be something to come of this offense. That is a dirty handball to give out with no pressure and nothing going on, but Chapman free kick in a dangerous spot, and maybe here we could see some fireworks from the offense that they've really been needing this whole second half. But we'll see what Wells can produce. Linfeld's making his way over as Leo will step off the ball. And hopefully Linfeld 
as his mom was saying at the halftime report, could put some passion onto this free kick and hopefully end up with the score. Nine players up for Chapman. Linfelt whips it in towards the back post. And Crayhill with the decisive save. Offsides is the call. And Jack is, Crayhill, another great save from him. The goalkeeping so far from both of these teams has been on point all night long, Lucas. So far, it's just been a showcase of amazing goalkeeping. Great ability to come out of the box, to save the box. Crayhill has been very strong in some of the saves he's needed to make. And so far, it's just been an amazing game to watch. Back and forth, all you could ask for, Nico. Anderson battling it out with Frazier. No call there. Falling wins it back. Now Anderson. Johnson in the middle. Anderson rolls it forward. Space to shoot. As it falls to Jones. Wien on the offensive. And just throwing his body out in front was Leedlin. And that is stellar defending right there. Putting everything on the line laying your own body down to be able to stop the ball from going to the net. And that's great defending right there, Nico. So Senef once again on the corner. Just over five minutes remain here in this second half. Chapman up 1-0 at the break. We have level the score here. And Johnson just couldn't find the footing in the very end. But right now the Thunder starting to bring some of the lightning along with them. Perfectly said, Nico. They've really been pushing on offense, pressuring, getting the ball into dangerous areas, and so far, it's been very dangerous on their behalf. Knocked back towards Crayhill by Hearn. And as this game continues to wind down, you mentioned the five last minutes of each half, along with the first five, always the tensest, but you'd have to imagine that Freeing and Linfelt, looking back at what they had, Especially Linfelt, that one-on-one -on -one opportunity that Crayhill came up so, so huge for the Thunder with. They'll be sleeping on those. Trying to think what could have been. They will be sleeping on those, Nico. And so far, Fring and Linfelt have been very good on offense, but they just need a little bit more spark to be able to execute and finish the game out as a win. Anderson continues his pursuit and goes down hard. The Wheaton bench loves that from there, 13, as Marco Rodriguez goes into the book. And we've seen Price Anderson run yeah, super quick all day, use his body to Rodriguez. take advantage, and of course, as we see on the replay here, be able to get fouls and drag fouls out from defenders. He may be six foot four, but sneaky pace, as we like to say. Very sneaky pace. Can definitely come in clutch. We'll see if it does here for Wheaton. 406 remains. Game level at one apiece. Brock Seneff with that trusty left. Right in front, and they continue to go for the near corner, trying to play that in front. That was Yamada, the closest one to it, as it goes out for another corner. And Brock Seneff's been very busy all night with free kicks. Being able to have that consistency in finding the near post every single time, I'm sure they practice it 100 times and over in practice, but so far, I think he's been pretty good with consistently finding that near post. And that one just beyond the left post. Glenn committed, and for the first time tonight, wasn't able to get a paw on it. Eddie Carrillo, a few blank stares towards his defensive unit, trying to wonder how that one almost went in. Now Rodriguez, ahead to Freeing. Very good hold up play from Fring right there to use his body to be able to keep the ball and wait for his teammates. Can one of these guys be the hero? Freeing scored the opening goal for Chapman. Perhaps an assist here. Jones the other way. And now some beautiful build up there from Wheaton. Just a beautiful bit of defending there from Cooper Haley to stop it away. Cooper Haley been trusted. We talked a lot about Evan Crownfield and the impact that he's had, but Cooper Haley, another one of these freshmen in the midfield, gained some key moments and key playing time down the stretch for 
Eddie Carrillo. For sure, he's been phenomenal this night of being able to get the ball and play to the other side, defend, help with the offense, and he's been great so far. Deep throw for Senef once again. Glynn comes all the way out. And with the benefit of the goalkeeper. And that was a risky play by Glynn there. You can understand his confidence to be able to come out. And luckily enough for him, he was able to get enough on the ball to be able to draw out a foul. Now the clock ticks down. We're just at about two minutes remaining. The one difference with college minutes, minutes here in D3. Minutes, you know how much time you have remaining compared to the stoppage time you get anywhere else. As now Frazier with some room out in front. Busby tried lining up the shot. Jones got there just in time. And that was very dangerous for Wheaton's defense. They had almost the same amount of men on defense as on offense right there. So that could have gone anywhere, Nico. And Crayhill. Out with these, and we averts the danger in the end. Minute and a half left in this second half. And Cray Hill looking to just calm the game down, maybe settle for a tie and just boot it as far up the field as he can. Vander Kolk up ahead to falling. Battle for it down there on the far side. Just some bruising play there from Galvin. And that is a dangerous place to give up a free kick at this stage in the game left. Less than a minute left, and they have a free kick sending everybody up the field. There could be some fireworks on this play, Nico. You know Galvin likes his pursuit. Unfortunately, Nitley there got caught lacking. Senef sends it in. Falls to the feet of Johnson. It just has not been his night at all as Glenn ahead forward to Linfeld. Freeing, sprinting down the middle of the field. He Gable has getting tied himself. up in the forward. Freeing on the far side, Busby, and offsides is the call. Busby misses the goal anyway, and Chapman continues to come up empty-handed. And they're going to be disappointed that, about that play, Nico. A few seconds they had to wait just to be able to let the defenders get in, as we see here on the replay. Very close call. Couldn't tell who it was who got tangled up back in the middle of the field as Linfeld made his run, but you have to wonder, Freeing running through that midfield, nobody marking him. Yamada had to wonder whether when to commit to Linfeld, but now 17 seconds remain. Seems like tie is an inevitable in the cards for both of these teams. And this is going to be a big play to see here if they just waste the timeout and settle with the draw or if they're still going to be gunning to maybe get that last second goal. Up ahead, Wien still with the opportunity. Vander Kolk, they need something forward and they need it quickly. Glenn, need a fire shot, Jones two, up ahead. One. And who else but Glenn to finish this one off. One to one the score here to finalize it here That's at Wilson Field. Scores. Fantastic Glenn, display from both of these teams, especially on the goalkeeping side. And for Glenn and Crayhill, they were really the reasons that kept their team in this match. Both goalies had stellar performances today, Nico, and especially Alex Glenn, who's really been able to help his team and ultimately leave the game with only one goal conceded. Well, when you take a look at what both of these teams needed, not necessarily what they would have wanted, but considering that both of them coming into this game with two game losing streaks, You'll have to settle for a tie, not ideal, but definitely not worse than a loss. Of course, and you have to give some credit to Crayfield as well. Being the number two on the team is the most patient ability that you have to do. You have to wait for your opportunity. Little stuff decides the game, and this performance for sure is going to help his case in being promoted from number two to number one. Well, Eddie Carrillo continues to have to have some questions answered for this Chapman side going forward, but... Overall, for Chapman, it was definitely a promising game. A lot of highlights, but definitely the offensive side didn't come through when they really needed them to. Uh, definitely, for sure, I agree. Defensively, Chapman was very strong throughout the game. We saw lots of good performances. But in the second half also, we saw lots of fireworks from both teams, lots of physical play, slide tackles, lots of just fireworks. We love to see it here. Well, I mean, when you take a look at what the second half had in store, obviously Cooper falling, equalizing the match, and that 
from that point on, we had a little bit of an extra gear, just couldn't find that extra footing to get this game back on level terms. As for Chapman, a few opportunities, a big one for Garrett Linfeld. Unfortunately, that spirit that his mom was talking about at halftime did not come through for the Panthers throughout this second half. How did it really look to you, especially from an attacking perspective for both these teams, Lucas? From an attacking perspective, I think Wheaton really stepped their game up on the second half. They were able to put more pressure on Chapman's defense, more pass around the box, and more you know, difficult positions for Alex Glynn. But for sure, Glynn for sure held his line, and very difficult game to be able to call. Well, both of these teams had their hats to hang on from this match. But as we take a look at what happened throughout this game, started off with all the things that Alex Glenn did today. He has been fantastic throughout this game. But when you take also a look at how the Panthers were able to respond, it got kicked off with Jonah Freeing, finding that space, beautiful flick on from Busby, and Freeing did the rest for his first goal of the year. And I mean, that's just textbook striker instinct right there, using your body, waiting for the ball to come to you, and just nailing in the coffin. No doubt about that, but after that, Chapman just could not find that extra gear and it was Cooper falling, kind of orchestrating the offense as a freshman for Wheaton. They just couldn't find that extra gear until falling found the breakthrough. But as for the Chapman offense, it was tough sledding for them all night long. Yes, it was for sure. Crayhill came up huge time and time again. And as we mentioned, Leo Wells going against one of his former teammates and Caden Yamada just wasn't really his night despite having such a great start to the season. Of course, and I'm sure throughout the season, Leo Wells will be able to pick it up more or less. And here you can see Cooper falling. That's his first goal of his collegiate career. Fantastic response from him. And Brock Seneff, the captain, loving it as usual. Price Anderson wasn't able to get on the score sheet for the second straight game as this game did get chippy towards the end. Of course, and you love to see passions flying and players really showing how passionate they are about the sport. But I think a 1-1 tie is a perfect way to end this game, Nico. That was probably the other closest chance that Wien had towards that. Glenn really had to come alive in that second half, make some tough saves in that first half. It was a bit more calculated, a little bit more composed. But ultimately, he's able to stave off of a tie. Didn't get the clean sheet, but still have to hang your hat on that performance from Alex Glenn. Of course, and it's a great performance from both goalkeepers. Both sides had very good opportunities, and both goalies really were able to display the best of their game today. Well, when we take a look at what both these teams have coming up, as for Chapman, you got Whitman tomorrow. Obviously, we talked about that, but looking ahead towards the Skyak, they obviously have some, some competition to go through, and it's going to be hard for them going through that going forward. But now, we're going to go down. We've been talking all night about Alex Glenn, and Ainsley Savant's got him down on the field. Ainsley. Lucas and Nico, I'm here with Alex Glynn, our heroic goalie from tonight. Um, Alex, you had so many heroic saves tonight. It did end in a tie, but how are you going to keep this mentality going for the ne next games going on? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm definitely happy with how we played, but we got to get better each day. Um, unfortunately, we tied, but this is, I think this is good for us. This was a solid team. This is better, what we'll see, better than what we'll see in conference. Um, so we just got to keep getting better each day, and we'll be, we'll be set for the rest of the year. Thank you so much. And how did you stay strong mentally throughout this game, uh, even while there was a tie? Uh, honestly, I just wanted to win. Um, these are all my, these are 25 of my best friends, so I just wanted to win for them. And that kind of helps me pull through in the game. Well, thank you so much, Alex. Um, I look forward to seeing you in the next game, but uh, I will send it, you got to send it back up to you guys in the booth. Thank you so much, Ainsley. And as we take a look at what both these teams had in store, Alex Glenn, we talked about him all night long. Definitely some things that Chapman can hold their hat on, but also a bunch of improvements that do need to be made to get back in that winning column and hopefully contend for that Skyak title. Of course, and especially after coming off of two very difficult losses on the East Coast, I think that this was a very good result for Chapman. 1-1 one, one draw, everyone does good, no one's really at fault, and no big mistakes, and just perfect performances from both defenses, I think. Well, the defenses were on full display for both of these teams. And as we take a look forward, looking at that Skyx schedule, obviously you get Redlands on Wednesday, and then it really starts to snowball forward. A lot of tough games coming up. How do you think they can fare against some competition, which Alex Glenn feels like is not as great as some of what the players put out for Wheaton tonight? Of course, maybe some of that competition will listen to Alex Glenn and maybe have a bit more energy going into the games against Chapman. But for sure, I think that the defense with this performance, if they're able to stay consistent and keep their ability to stay line, stay calm, and just play basic soccer, I think they'll be able to hold up very well against all the competition. Well, they kick off their season in the Skyac on the road against Redlands just down the 55 freeway. But then 
looking forward, you get a bunch of different competition throughout the Southern California area. Occidental, obviously, the cream of the crop, faced Chapman in that Skyac battle two years ago. They won their Skyac championship last season for the first time in a very long time. Cal Lutheran on September 25th. You get Pomona. We'll be broadcasting that one live here from CSBN. Laverne as well, and then USC on Hoco. Definitely some interesting competition coming up forward for the Chapman Panthers. But you have to like the way that they're faring and the way that Eddie Carrillo has this unit starting to click now. Of course, and you love to see that Eddie Carrillo's orchestrated his team and been able to maybe give the younger guys the confidence that they need to play their own game and understand and explain to the older guys how to help the younger guys be their best self. So for sure, exciting future. Well, when we take a look at what Wheaton can improve on, obviously, in one of the tougher conferences in all of Division Three, you have North Central, Illinois Wesleyan, who beat them in the tournament last season on penalties 7-6. to six. A rough way to go out. How can they get back into that win column? They're 1-3-1 one one, three and one now. Now they have some work to do heading into their CCIW year. For sure. I think that if the team maybe just puts a little bit spark, maybe makes it their personal goal to be able to succeed individually and achieve everything and greatness as a team, I think that they'll be able to pull off maybe winning the whole thing this year if they're able to do that, Nico. Well, we'll keep our tabs on them as this season goes forward. But as for Chapman, everything's starting to click a little bit. Come away with the tie here tonight, but we'll see what they can keep on rolling here as this season progresses. Well, as for what we've had so far, Lucas, it's, it's been, been great, great working with you. With you. For, For our director, Zach Richter, Richter, our producer, Emily Cho, the rest of our crew here at CSBN, Lucas Batten, Ainsley Savant on the sidelines. I'm Nico Schwegler, and we say so long from Orange as this game ends 1-1. Wheaton versus Chapman.